Hello, hello, hello. What's going on, everybody? How are you guys doing? My name is Ian, and welcome to <laughs> welcome to my stream over on Pixel. It's my first time, so hopefully you guys are gonna have fun. I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I do, and then uh, and then we'll get into this. How are you guys doing? What's up, Jeff? Your plan is to learn to make toys with ZBrush. Awesome, awesome. Hello, hello, Team Weird. How are you doing? Hard day. Eh? Hello, hello. Hey, what's going on? Alexandria, how you doing? Also too, guys, I'm gonna try my best um, to keep up with the chat. Uh, if, uh, if you're kind of new of who I am, I am a freelance toy sculptor and I make toys with ZBrush. And ideally, the I like to teach on my uh, own streams, usually on Twitch and on YouTube. And so what I like to do is take questions and I also like to kind of demonstrate things as I sculpt. So if you guys have questions, you guys have uh, anything you'd like to see, I'm going to try my best to answer it as much as possible. But believe you me, um, you know, ideally we're going to make something really awesome and we're going to make it for 3D print, which is really what it's about. So as I sculpt, I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain my process. So, yeah. Hey, what's up, Alex? What's going on? Uh, names are here. Hey, Stephanie, how you doing? Chris, what's going on? Dezik? Hey, dude, what's up? David, what's happening? Everybody, welcome in. Mike, David. Hey, what's going on, Dosh? All right, guys, so first things first, um, I was just going to go ahead and show you really quickly what I was working on right now, uh, which is my take on Sub-Zero. Uh, MK Movie came out, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so, well, the trailer came out, and so I kind of wanted to do my own take on it before that actually comes up. Hey Ian, I'm loving that Sub Zero. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm hoping to start my own line of action figures. Nice. That is actually a plan of mine. I do have plans to kind of showcase some of the articulation that I've done before, um, but that's going to be a little bit later down the line. Right now, we're going to start with something kind of fun and basic, and and just something to get started. Something awesome. And I'm going to show you right now. We're doing uh, kind of a theme around here on Pixelogic where. We're taking uh, Irish folklore, and the Olafist, I think that's how you say it, is a really awesome creature in, in uh, folklore. So I'm really excited to sculpt this. Hannibal, oh, hey, what's happening? What's up, Death Sacrament? Hey, Joe, hello, hello. Jamie, so we're just going to let people pile in a little bit more. Trandor the Troll, hey, dude, I'm happy to see you on. I was, I was worried when I didn't get on yesterday. Oh, no worries, man. Glad to see you here. Whoop, whoop. So yeah, this is what we're going to be sculpting. Uh, I'm not going to be following the, this as like concept to the letter. I'm going to be kind of doing my own take. So I have a few other things here. And if you don't know what program I'm using, it's Pure Ref. Um, so I pulled some Dragon Anatomy and some real life Dragon Anatomy, some bearded dragon. Uh, so we have some fun stuff to look at. So we're going to be starting this here in a second. What's up, Jamie? And go get up. Hey, hey. Thanks, dude. Leticia, hello, hello. Uh, do you sculpt toys with perspective on or off? I sculpt with it off. Perspective makes me kind of feel... Um, when you're up close, perspective kind of gives you a false sense of depth. So with perspective, in fact, I'll actually demonstrate that real quick on this guy. So here is perspective off, and I can kind of just see the model as it is. But with perspective turned on, it doesn't look too bad from here. It's when I really get in that I start actually seeing the distortion. And this is this gives me a false sense of, uh, of depth. And when we're 3D printing or just making anything that's gonna be manufactured, we definitely wanna make sure that our proportions and our volume looks correct. So um, I tend to sculpt with it off, but I do recommend if you want it on to go up to duck, nope, go up to draw and actually type in 110 on the perspective uh, focal length that kind of actually helps you get just a little bit better so you can uh, like I said go up to draw type in your own focal length and now that's not too too bad but I tend to sculpt with it all oh that's cool yeah that figure is gonna be lit yeah I can't wait this is a uh, like I said this is what I'm currently working on uh, for a personal project and yeah it's coming together nice did you pick a sea creature so you could give him <laughs> give him an orca? <laughs> uh, he might eat he might eat an orca. That might happen. <laughs> How many streams do you think you need to finish it? That's a great question, Mr. Sanson. Uh, 
I'm thinking it's... I'm probably going to... I'm hoping two to three streams will get pretty close to done. It depends on how detailed I want to take it. Um, but, yeah. It might, might take the whole month to prep to 3D print. So sculpting and then also prepping. So you guys will get a lot of that information on my workflow when I do that. So we're going to go ahead and actually start up a new scene. So let's switch this off. Let's go ahead and grab a sphere. Bloop. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and hit T for edit and then make polymesh 3D. Now we got our sphere. And we're going to actually play with some of the new features, too, a little bit. So, so kind of taking a look at this dragon head. Thanks so much for all the info. Of course, not a problem. All right. So what we're going to do is actually play with some new features. Uh, one of my favorites is pretty much the only way to block anything out these days, in my opinion, is the mesh balloon. So I'm going to go ahead and hold control and turn the lazy mouse to like um, maybe like 13. Yeah, it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be too high. And just kind of looking at the shape of this, we're going to get like maybe the jaw. So let's start drawing. Just kind of get the shape of the upper jaw a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold shift and that's going to send it into the middle. Of course, I don't really like that, so let's do a little bit better. Let's actually start with the lower part. Come up to the snout. Let's just get a big old head going. Yeah, let's hold shift. And there you go. That's going to that's gonna be the start. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of widen that out. And let's just start shaping it a bit. And I'm actually going to want to go to split and split unmasked. So that way... I have a separate subtool, and let's rename it right out the gate. <laughs> Moved over to Twitch, nice inspire, nice. Speaking of new features, what is your favorite so far? My favorite so far, troll, is I'd have to say the mesh balloon. My second favorite would be the mesh project because it's just, I would say I'm not the best with hard surface and is really helping me get stuff quickly so that I can start sculpting. So I'm torn between mesh balloon and uh, mesh project. I feel like it's, they're both really good features. All right, let's grab the move brush. So B M V and let's hold shift, kind of drag some of this out a little bit. And we're just kind of just making something up as we go. It's also going to be a little bit of concept at the same time, because I'm just pulling my reference and just kind of seeing where everything falls. I don't really start the 3D printing thinking process, like on how you actually want to start prepping for 3D print until I start looking at the pose. But for right now, let's actually get something like this. Let's hide and hit save as. Well, let's go up to my desktop. And we're going to call this the only fist i hopefully spell it right uh block out hello bro i have a question i am studying video games designing and i really want to work in the modeling area i want to know if there is a free version of zbrush so i can get practice and be better there absolutely is if you go to pixelogic.com there is zbrush core mini it is 100% free. You don't need any, all you need is an account. Just log in, download it, and you are good to go. You can start right away. And yeah, it's very free, very, it's very good. I really recommend it. Mesh project is so good. Yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is probably my favorite update so far. It is by far my favorite update so far. <laughs> Simon Fisher. Hey, Ian, so awesome to see you on here. Haven't tried any of these new features yet. You gotta get on it, man. You gotta get on it. <laughs> I like the Dynamics update also. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Dynamics update is really good. The um, the AO as well. I'm really digging that. Okay. So if you guys don't know, if you want to kind of like make... Kind of like a little temporary eye socket or any type of hole that's controlled. If you use the move brush and start... Uh, pulling it out. If you hold Alt, it'll actually move towards normal. It'll move along those normals. So you can actually kind of just pick an angle, hold Alt, and kind of just press in so that it's not so uncontrollable. You kind of just 
little trick I picked up along the way. There we go. Just so I can kind of see what's happening here. And for those of you who are new to sculpting, uh, generally sculpts hit this little thing called Valley of the Suck, <laughs> where everything kind of looks really bad for a while. So don't, don't worry about if your sculpts don't look good out the gate. Just kind of play with your shapes a little bit, see what you got, um, and really focus on the block out is my tip. Nice, thanks for the info, no problem. Yeah, Nino, what's happening? Happy first Pixel stream day. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Already getting that spamming warning. All right, guys. And like I said at the beginning, if you're just coming in, uh, my name's Ian, and I freelance toy sculpt, and most of the stuff I do is for 3D printing. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate. Ask away, and I'll try to answer the best I can. All right. Now that we got this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and hold Maloon, uh, Maloon, Mesh Balloon, and we're kind of just going to go ahead and get the lower jaw portion. Now, nah, let's redo that. I'm just kind of going to get the shape here. Keep it kind of low. Let's get where the neck would be. And then hold shift and send that there. And get something like that. Hello, Dracula. What is happening? Who is Ian Robinson? <laughs> What's up, bro? I am a guy who likes to sculpt and hang out with other people. <laughs> oh, I make toys too. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Anybody working on some cool projects? And the theme of this uh, of this month is uh, Celtic mythology, Irish folklore. There we go. Kind of pull that out a little bit. Just getting like a little bit of a beak shape. Hello, hello. What's up, Snickles? Hello. Fine, bro. I am learning a lot. Thanks. No problem. All right. Let's go ahead and... All right. So the model's pretty big right now. So we're going to go to Deformation and Unify. Kind of scale that down just a little bit. That's a little too massive. So... And let's go ahead and save as. I save a lot because I've had a lot of bad experiences. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go ahead and select this guy. So this will be the lower jaw. Let's actually kind of split it off right now. And we'll go ahead and split on mast. And we'll call this upper jaw. And then this one is going to be lower jaw. There we go. So starting out real, real basic. Why is your skill not developing in ZBrush? Uh, it's kind of hard to answer. I would say, depending on what you're trying to achieve, uh, you may want to just kind of see what, um, like you're trying to do characters, study anatomy. Um, at some point, um, knowing the program is really important, but then there are other things you can do to kind of help yourself improve. It just really depends on what you're trying to achieve. And of course, that's really only up to you to be able to uh, provide that. But if you're looking for guidance or if you're looking for, you know, maybe some help in some areas, just kind of figure out what exactly you want to sculpt and then start uh, maybe studying that a little bit. So for me, like character design was huge. So I really wanted to make sure that I would study uh, a lot of uh, human anatomy. So that way I could really just kind of help um, help myself just push to that next level, which sometimes can be difficult. So just keep at it and ask away. What are you making? I am making an Oli Fist. We are doing a basic block out. In fact, you know, I'll kind of keep this up right here for now. This might be a little helpful. We'll put that up right there so you guys can see it. 
Spicer, what's happening, dude? Hey, Ian, I'm working on a set of creature uh, characters and scenario for D&D. I'm trying to find out what's best way that I can connect the parts of the scenario. Thought of making like a puzzle piece for the ground. Not sure for the objects. Do you have any suggestions? Ooh, I would suggest kind of looking at puzzle pieces and the way that the puzzle pieces you would connect and maybe creating little joints on the base. So I would like sculpt out the base and try to see how you can maybe break that apart and then see how you can get those to fit while you're still trying to tell the story. That sounds like a lot of fun, but there's so many ways you can go about that. So, what up, brother? Congrats on first stream. Thank you so much, Spicer. Logic, any anatomy courses or resources you recommend? Okay, that's a great question. I recommend uh, a few different sources. Um, the first and foremost, and I'm not even kidding, is actually your best friend right here in ZBrush. If you open up the light box, you actually have some male anatomy and female anatomy. But if you go under project, which is it's a project, and then it is, why did I totally lose my spot? Oh my gosh, hold on one second. Uh, Z spheres will help you actually get some pretty basic blockouts, but there is, I totally lost it. Give me one second, sorry. <laughs> um, there is an ecrochet here. Why did I just totally blink on this? Ah, here we go, tool. So light room, uh, light box, tool, and then you actually have an ecrochet by Ryan Kingsley. So if you double click that, you actually have it right here and you have all this muscle research just kind of laid out for you. So you can go through and actually take a look at the anatomy and kind of take a look at how they built it and go from there. Um, you can also look at uh, figurosity.com, I think, would be a good one. But I use this all the time. It's one of my best friends. Hey, what's up, Jeff? He's on YouTube. Thought I was being called that for a second. <laughs> no, what's up, Ian? Air Sculpts, hey, what is going on, Genesis? Hello, hello. Okay, we're gonna go pretty wide with this head, so let's actually turn off symmetry, stick this in the middle. I'm gonna click the pizza box, and I'm just going to kind of stretch this out. There we go. And that's gonna kind of help me. Get a little bit more feel for this. There we go. This is also a very awful color to be looking at, so. <laughs> hey, what's up, Kamari? Hey, Uncle Jesse, what up, dude? How are you guys doing? Welcome in, guys. Anyway, let me put the uh, concept idea down so you guys can see what's going on. All right, turn the pizza box off, send that up, and we'll kind of open this up a little bit. So this is gonna look really funky for a while. Now let's go ahead and kind of get the base idea of the body. So we're gonna zoom out, hold mesh balloon one more time, and I'm just kind of gonna go ahead and just sculpt the basic body. Hold shift, stick that kind of in the middle. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. This is a very weird creature, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of tackle it. There we go. So I'm going to worry about the block out first, and then we'll go ahead and worry about uh, details much, much later. Right now, it's all about silhouette and shape. Society also has a free ecrochet. Uh, if you Google it for male anatomy, yep. Uh, looks like a cute little sock puppet. <laughs> yeah, at the moment it does, right? Uh, he's a big ZBrusher as well, big fan of his, yeah. Uh, his current blobby face looks like... <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, what's going on, A-Cube? How you doing? Hello, hello. This is my first, yep. So I'm not nervous in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and... We need to get this color looking a little bit better. Let's actually color drop this guy. So let's go up to Z plugin, Z color. I'm gonna click this guy. Z color is amazing, by the way. It's a free plugin, it's already here, but you can kind of drag and drop color from your reference. 
something like such and then set color and then close that out come up to our paintbrush so bpa for paintbrush go to color fill object and that's how we'll rock that for now just to get a different color you're doing right thank you thank you <laughs> hello ryan how are you doing yeah, it already a thousand times way better than my first. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it, AQ. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go ahead and grab this and hit color. Here we go. So because he's like such a long, like, like he's just like this very long serpent type dragon. I'm thinking about maybe giving him a bit of a body. As you can see, some of the creatures that I really pulled from for reference has like you know like the bearded dragon has such a big gut um those are now normal dragons but even like this type of like the way they displayed him here he has kind of a big gut so i think i'm gonna give him a little bit more of a bubble gut than what we have here almost like he's fed so let's actually hit uh, the inflate so b i n for brush inflate and we're just going to go ahead and kind of fill his belly a bit just to get some size. Bubble gut. Yep. New, new term. We're going with it. <laughs> there we go. And also, too, the best part about 3D printing is you don't really have to worry too much about... Uh, how pretty your model looks in the beginning, you know. I'm not going to be too focused on topology out the gate. I'm just really going for shapes. I really just want to see, you know, how I can make the shapes look like the thing I want it to look like before I worry about any of that stuff. <laughs> give him a body. <laughs> I'll give him a body. Thick guy, please. Oh, yeah. So... Also, too, guys, how is the audio for the music versus the uh, mic? Wanted to make sure everything was coming through, okay? There we go. All right, now that we have something that we kind of like, I'm going to keep that. We're actually going to go to some new features, which is the Snake Hook Curve Brush. And these things are awesome. I'm actually going to pick Snake Curve 2. And yep, it says Sculptures Pro is probably best. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Make believe TV! What's happening? That ref is telling me this is 10 times bigger than a whale. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, we might get an orca in there between his teeth at some point. Another for a crunchy mess clan. Oh, you know it. Yep. <laughs> it's all smooth as heck. Not yet. Well, yeah. Oh, what music? Okay, perfectly. Perfect, actually. Nice. Thank you. All right. So we're going to take the snake curve. And if we draw a line from where we start and finish, and we start pulling it out, you can see here the snake curve too. It just pulls straight out. So what we're going to do is actually get a bigger brush. It might be a little too big. There we go. And we're just going to kind of pull that out a little bit. There we go. Now I'm actually going to just tap right there on the surface. Take my mass lasso. Kind of soften that up a little bit. I like to actually take my gizmo, hit Y on the keyboard, which will open up the transpose tool. For those of you who didn't know, hit Y, gizmo, Y, transpose. But what's cool about this is if I just draw my gizmo or touch it anywhere and then hit Y, my gizmo gets transported to the transpose line. I like to do that because if I want to try to draw something straight out the rest of the way, I'll actually come in and touch it with the giz with the um, with the transpose tool, then hit Y again, and then I can just kind of pull straight out. Perfect, actually. Nice. That good levels jamming. Awesome. Would you love to have that in an aquarium because I do? Heck yeah, absolutely. Look, he's already swimming. He's already a happy little swimmer. <laughs> Living Vertex, what's up? What's up? How you doing? All right. 
And what's cool about that, so we're gonna go ahead and grab this right here, soften that. Let's go ahead and hold Alt and just transport the gizmo the rest of the way. Let's widen that up a bit. And sticky key S. That's a new feature for those of you who don't know. If you hold S, you can actually uh, shrink or draw your brush size without ever clicking the tablet, which is really neat. But you do have to turn that on, which is under preferences, uh, interface, click, and then you have to turn on uh, sticky keys, which is right here. But it's such a great feature. I used to never hit S. I always hit spacebar, like always. But then I would get annoyed when I would touch something <laughs> like the draw size or the focal shift. So S, I, I now use S way more than I used to. Okay. Let's do that one more time. Let's actually get uh, another fin happening. So B, S, and then number two for the snake curve two brush. Let's go and drop this down, draw that out. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull there. Actually, you know what? I think I want this one to kind of trail back a little bit. So let's back that up. And let's actually hit B, S, and then snake curve one. So this uh, snake curve one will actually bend the uh, the curve a little bit, It'll kind of pull on a, on a surface. So wherever you draw from, it's actually gonna kind of pull in that direction, so. Turn on symmetry, that might help you just a little bit. You know, I'm just gonna say. So that kind of pulls up a little bit. Let's try that again. There we go. So it's kind of pulling out just a bit. Touch that. Soften it. Hit Y. I'm gonna touch right there. Y again. I'm gonna kind of pull that back and just angle that where I want it to be. So these will be his little fins. And then I'm thinking about giving him a giant tail at the end. Spacebar for life. <laughs> Only because it, I have it, I can't break it. I know, right? Yeah, click that click that guy all day. <laughs> I'm gonna get something to drink one second. So we're gonna go until about 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we got a good few hours, which will be nice to get some uh, Get some good stuff happening here. Okay, let's grab the mass lasso. And I'm just gonna go ahead, center this. And then I think I'm just gonna kinda like, go for that silhouette. So right up here, the very top, ZBrush provides a silhouette that I typically invert. And so I'm kinda just looking at that and seeing what is happening here. And just want like, something that is going to look cool while it's in T-Pose. And I'm starting to kind of consider how I want this to be posed. Um, so we might actually play with like a little bit of environments as well. Maybe have them coming out of a cave. But for right now, so I can see the whole creature, um, we're going to go ahead and just kind of push his tail out. And I had perspective turned on for some reason, so... Cosmic Legend, yeah, looking good. Thanks, man. Thank you. How to sculpt with symmetry if it's in a different pose position? Thanks. Mojo Jojo, awesome, awesome name, by the way. Pardon me, um, how to sculpt with symmetry if it's in a different pose position? Okay, so what I recommend you do is, before you start posing is, um, to always save off a file beforehand so that you can always fall back into symmetry. But let's say your model's just slightly off. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just duplicate this, hit solo so you can, I can kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, if your model's slightly off, let's say like, right, send that home. Let's say it's like off like this a little bit, you know? Um, and you wanna hit symmetry, you can try one of two things. Either try to set it back to T-Pose as much as you can. But if you didn't, if you didn't really mess with the topology on either side, you can try to 
go up to transform, activate symmetry, and try to use posable symmetry. If you click it, it's possible that it will actually uh, kick on, but that's that only happens every now and then. Um, a sure way that you can kind of get it back to basic would be to try to pose it. Um, like I said, maybe save off a save off a um, a file before you start posing, just so that you have something to play with and break. But if you wanted to get it as close as possible, you can then go up to geometry, modify topology, and then hit mirror and weld. And that will kind of reset you back to the center. And then also to try to send it home so that you have it in world center too. Um, and then you can also go up to deformation and unify. Hopefully some of those work. Uh, it all depends, of course. And see you using the new mask brushes. Oh yeah, I'm loving them. How do you soft mask? Oh, great question. So soft masking, let's go ahead and actually go back up to subtool. Let's delete this one. <clears throat> okay, soft masking, you can do it one of two ways. You can either just go ahead and mask and then hold control and tap to soften it, invert, control to soften it. You can also hold uh, control and alt to sharpen it, of course, and then vice versa. The other way you can soft mask is if you mask like up close like this, it's kind of going to have a natural fall off. But if you back way out and then zoom back in, you'll actually see the difference how ZBrush softens it. So if you're way out here and you want to soft mask something, and zoom back in. That's one way to do it, but I just control tap. It gets it really soft really quickly. <clears throat> Great a lot. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Kamar Talvin. How you doing? Hello, Ian. Did you join the stream family now? Yep. Will you be streaming occasionally here like other artists? Yes, Dark Knight. I will be streaming here every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Not a problem, Mojo. Oops, I almost dropped my water bottle, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and grab that a little bit. So yeah, control tap kind of softens it. Alt tap so that I can place my gizmo where I want and kind of stick that down there. And then let's turn on local sim so I can actually kind of shrink this down a little bit and I don't, you know what, I don't think we're going to give him any type of arms. I think his fins are going to be good enough. But we are going to give him kind of a little bit of a scaly back. Or like some, like some scales. So let's go ahead and hit BS and then let's hit curve 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line. So something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. So then I get this feature right here. And let's see. Bloop. I'm going to do that one more time. No, not mask. It's going to go straight. And we'll take that just a little bit behind. Ooh, that's a little weird. There we go. Kind of pull that up a little bit. There we go. And just touch right there on the surface, and that'll give us a little bit of this kind of spine. And then let's get hit the move brush, so B, M, V. And let's just kind of push that back and lightly smooth it. Let's actually turn off the Sculptors Pro and hit Trim Dynamics, so BTD for Trim Dynamic. I'm a big fan of shortcuts, if you guys hadn't <laughs> noticed. Hello, yeah, what's up, Thunderstorm Art? How you doing? Welcome, man. Are you using new sticky keys or did you disable it? Uh, they added the option to disable it in the 6.2 update. Yes, I'm using sticky keys, I love it. Um, and if you want to disable that, go up to Preferences. Uh, interface, click, and then yeah, you could turn it on and off here, which I think is a really good 
I think it's a really good idea because so many people are just used to hitting S and then wanting to move it um, that it actually threw me off a bit to not put my pen down. So I had to make the... I had to, like, want that feature almost. So I'm glad that they did that. Hello from Brazil. How you doing, Luis? Deadpool. Nice, man. Nice. I'm a big Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, you have a very old version of uh, point six points. Nope, I have the... Nope, right. I got it. Yep. I'm on it. 21 points. 20? Point 20. 20. 20, 20 6 point 2. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, another update. Yeah. There was a few updates this time for sure. What if you are in the highest subdivision final detailing and suddenly there are polygons stretching? How to solve it? Ooh, I love it. Loving your questions. Those are great. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and save this real quick and then I will demonstrate that for you. So let's go up to the sphere, make poly mesh 3D. And we're going to go ahead and actually like crank this up a little bit. So control D a few times. Let's take it to like 2 million so we don't kill the stream. And let's go ahead and take the snake hook brush. And we're just going to pull that out. So there you go. So I have some really stretchy polygons. Um, the There's a couple ways you can do this. If you start making big changes where your polygon is kind of stretching, um, what I would recommend doing is double checking your topology and making sure that it looks clean. Um, whereas like if you're especially pinching, like you are doing details on eyes, you can get a lot of crunching here. What I highly recommend doing at that point is going ahead and re, uh, Z, re -Z remesh it. <laughs> so you remesh it again. Uh, but what you can do is go ahead and hit Control Shift D to cause a duplicate. Go up to geometry and hit delete so that delete lower. So that way now you're working with just this type of topology. And then go ahead and hit Z remesh. So let's go down to geometry, Z remesher, and then make sure you're set to something that's relatively decent and Z remesh it. And that way it's actually going to, uh, it's gonna rebuild that surface. But when you're high detailing sculpting, you really wanna have that stuff sorted before you even get into that. But you can do a high Z remesh with something like this. It just might take a bit. It's really, it can be really difficult to work that way. So I just highly recommend either Z remeshing it, duplicating it off um, and getting it. Um, you can even polygroup it which I can demonstrate that as well. But now you can see that the topology from before and after, it did its best. And then here you can subdivide. And you can see that it kept most of the detailing. So that's one way I would do it. Nice. How do we update our ZBrush? Oh, you can do two ways, one of two ways. You can either go to your file folder, go into your hard drive, program files. You can go to pixel logic, open up the current ZBrush file that you have, and then scroll all the way down and you have an updater and an upgrader. What I recommend doing is running the upgrader. Um, this will go ahead and look for any files that are online and then download them if necessary. And then updater will actually run those files to get them uh, to get them installed or just go to pixelogic.com and go into your licenses and download the current file and then install it from there. Hey, what's up, Carmen? <laughs> How many new brushes does the new version have? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, Dracula, but um, I mean, there's easily 10 new brushes that I've played with so far, but I think there's a little bit more than that. I'm not sure the exact number, but there's a good amount. Very helpful, thanks a million. Not a problem, not a problem. But again, too, I'll show you when I, in my workflow, I'm not really worried about the geometry out the gate. I'm all about the silhouette. I'm all about just trying to find the toy that I'm looking for. Of course, too, this is a little bit of, um, of 
concepting. Whereas generally as a as somebody who would be sculpting toys or sculpting um, somebody else's commission, usually they give you concept, um, which makes it a lot easier. Then you're just matching concept. But here we're also kind of creating something on the fly. So it's gonna be a little bit of both. But as we go through, I'll show you when I usually uh, Z remesh and start prepping for high detail. All right, we're gonna take the snake cook and what I kind of do is start pulling out a little bit more. And let's see, try to get a dragon head that we like. Although I really do like this one, so I don't think I'm gonna deviate too, too much. And we'll kind of maybe soften that a little bit though, so. There we go. Just kind of get something like such. And see where we go with that. Not a problem, I guess this is very helpful. Antonio Boa note. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna go ahead and see something. Good evening. Oh, that means good evening. Hey, what's up, Antonio? Good evening. Hey, Ian, is ZBrush Core Mini good enough for practicing? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've played with it a lot, even as somebody who has ZBrush, and it's a lot of fun, and it's very practical. Um, there are a lot of little tricks that you can do to really like push it to its limit, and I've covered that before, and if that's something you guys are interested in, I can always... Uh, reinstall that and show you guys because zebras core mini is really awesome it just has um there's just like a it's capped on how much of the poly count you can have so you want to try to stay as low as possible so there's like ways you can go ahead and work around that uh because it utilizes sculptures pro but yeah it's very cool I love learning more techniques and brushes. I've been in the film industry for a while, but learning from you always helpful. You're awesome. Hey, thank you so much, Oscar. I started out on ZBrush Core and it's fantastic for the price. Absolutely, yeah. That would be actually really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Then I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead and reinstall it and then uh, one of these streams, I'll, I'll, I'll pop it in there, no problem. It's fun. And if you guys catch me on my, uh, on my normal streams, you guys want to find me throughout the week you can actually find me on youtube and on twitch where i also answer zebrush questions and stuff and we sculpt pretty fun stuff and everything i do is pretty much like i said for 3d printing or toy manufacturing as a whole let's actually take the inflate brush so i am breaking this a lot right here but Again, just looking for the silhouette, kind of trying to get the vibe of it. And if the topologies gives me too much trouble, again, we're just going to go ahead. I have a shortcut, which I hit two, but if we go to geometry, Z remesh, and let's actually hit this at uh, three. We can just go ahead and Z remesh and I'll rebuild. And then we can soften and work around this a bit more. There we go. Do you start with Dynamesh or after several zebra meshes? Um, I actually don't Dynamesh that often. Usually when I Dynamesh, um, when I Dynamesh, typically it's when I'm projecting details and zebra mesher just, I kind of broke the geometry, but for the most part, I will zebra mesh out the gate a bunch more to keep it as low as possible and then um and then i kind of just finalize it after a while with dynamish i kind of play with dynamish more if i was just going to be sketching and i really don't know what i want um, and i just kind of want to play around and pull some geometry that's where it's better but if i could stay in um in some sort of nice topology i will just because it kind of helps things look better Especially if you hit D on the keyboard and open up uh, dynamics and you can get like a preview of what high uh, what your geometry look like high res. So that's that's helpful. 
for me. Where can you, uh, how can we find you on Twitch? Uh, the link above. I can print it. I'll paste it one more time. That link, you can find me there. Links to all of my socials. Will you be covering preparation for printing and the actual print eventually? Yes. Yep. Actually, my plan for these streams is to take the project from start to finish all the way to slicing, keying, um, even possibly articulation when I get a few more um, articulation files that I would like to... I'm kind of in the middle of playing with. Um, yeah, those are those are definitely things I want to cover. Do you set your sculpt in actual size in ZBrush for 3D printing? If so, how do you set size? I do, yes. And I do have a video on YouTube on how I cover that more in depth. But to give you um, a quick quick rundown, what I'd actually recommend is let's open up Z plugin. So let's go ahead and grab this little dot, drop it over here. And what I end up doing is actually kind of setting us um, an object for scaling. So I would go ahead and actually come up to the top, hit insert, and I like to insert a cube. And I like to kind of just estimate about what the model size would be. So let's say this would be a miniature. Then I'm actually gonna go ahead and, and scale this up to kind of cover the model. Let's hit transpose so you can see a little bit. It's a little hard to see, but let's say this is gonna be a miniature, right? So I'll kind of make sure that the cube kind of dwarfs the model. And then what I'll end up doing is sizing this cube. So what I'll do is I'll go to scale master and I'll hit set scene scale. And this will give me inches and millimeters. And here, this way you can see. And what I'm gonna be wanting to focus on is millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and select millimeter. Now that sets the scene to the scale of, you know, of the cube. Every time you play with scale master, you're actually setting the viewport to the subtool selected. So in this case, I got a cube and I went ahead and set scene scale. And if we look with our magnifying glass, I actually see it's about 10.5 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is actually take this and size it up to what a miniature would be. And most D&D miniatures, they range around 28 millimeters on average, give or take, depending on the specs. So get 28 millimeters, and then we'll come on down to resize subtool. Now that's gonna take everything and size it around the cube at 28 millimeters. And sometimes you might get an error if you do get a small error that pops up, just hit OK, and that will bypass it. And then afterwards, I go ahead and rename this cube. I'll call it 28 millimeter. So that way I know. And then I'll come up to 3D Print Hub, uh, which is again is also under Z plugin. And I will hit update size ratio. And you'll see it has selected right here, 28 millimeter. And now we're set. When I export this via export STL, that will export the cube at 28 millimeters and all the sub tools corresponding to that. So it all gets set to this cube. What's up, Paul? What's a common cause for inverted tries, bad edges, uh, making not print ready? Ah, um, a common cause for that would be uh, probably cr just crunchy geometry, anything that just wasn't properly cleaned up. So a good um, a good cleanup for that would be to go to geometry, modify topology, close holes, and weld points, and that will that'll help you solve that problem pretty quick. But I mean, a lot of times it's just the cause is not really noticing what your geometry looks like as you're working on it and then, or you overstretch the geometry with sculpting. So you'll, you'll want to kind of go through and clean that up as best as possible. How long have I been using ZBrush? Joe Day. Uh, I've been using ZBrush for a little over four years and I don't plan on stopping. <laughs> <laughs> do you only sell your work to clients or do you sell your own toy design straight to customers? Well, uh, primarily I work with clients. 
a lot of times it'll either be people reaching out to me or I'll reach out to companies and see if they're looking. Um, it's it's freelancing is a lot of uh, hustle, just trying to get out there. Thanks, Mojo. I really appreciate it. Great walkthrough for the scaling. I'm going to bookmark the stream. The scaling always confused me. Absolutely. And if you guys go to, um, if you guys go to my link and actually go to my YouTube. I cover a lot of videos there. I'm going to start covering more videos. But if you go to my playlists and you go to ZBrush Help, What's going on go ahead and pause. I actually have a list of all sorts of videos that I that uh, I work on, which basically just kind of help off. And I have a scaling video in there as well. So if you guys are interested in that, I am there. You can see me there. And I'm going to be putting up more videos over time. Now, let's say real quick, talking about scaling, that we scaled this and we don't really want to deal with it which you know that can happen go ahead and just delete the cube and then from there we just go to deformation and just hit unify and I can kind of set everything up maybe not actually you know what I just kind of I just kind of butchered that maybe don't hit unify but Don't listen to me on that one. There we go. Let's find it. There we go. Okay. But you can always scale up your models. Or just hit load and load back your other model. If you make a mistake, it's a really easy way to get back, back to it. And I'm actually going to take this dragon head copy and set that back over. So let's go to, let's go to sub tool. Let's go to copy and let's paste it right back on this one because I don't want to redo all that. I can just scale that down. There we go. And let's just delete that. Don't mind me. Hey, howdy. Hey, what's up, slow BR? How you doing? Loving the hat. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I occasionally will wear beanies and I have like a laundry list of them. Very cool. Definitely subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Let's get back to this guy. By the way, loving the questions, guys. Thank you so much for having <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go ahead and drag this out. So now I'm just kind of coming up with some temporary horns. These are fun. Take the snake hook. Again, just kind of drag that out a little bit. I'm thinking about actually putting a really big horn here. Right in the middle. So let's actually come here. If I can. There we go. I have my comfort zones where I like to be. Grab mesh balloon. I'm actually going to kind of come here. Hit shift. And then hold shift and now I'll put that right in the middle so I get this kind of base horn and I'm just gonna go ahead and split unmasked and let's just call this horn call this center horn if I can um, type Loop. Check out your stream amazing streams man thanks to pixel logic stream I found you do you have a stream available for that female venom she's awesome thank you so much um I don't <laughs> <laughs> uh no uh, all that stuff got lost um on my twitch but uh i've been wanting to to do another venom so i might have to do that hello ian uh do you also own your own ip no i don't own my own ip at this time but i definitely want to dabble and kind of come up with something a little bit for the most part i just kind of work with with clients and just get something that's they want but i would love to yeah that's something i've been interested in okay so this topology is just kind of really dense for how small it is so i'm just going to go ahead and actually z remesh it pretty low at like a two and sometimes when you use the mesh balloon you might see this kind of double line thing happen if that happens, go up to Geometry, 
modified topology and I'm sorry, nope. To um where are we? Why did I just lose my my spot? Not modified topology. We want to go to polygroups and we want to hit auto groups. And sometimes you'll have kind of double topology, which is weird. Um, doesn't seem to be at this point, so we're just gonna go ahead and maybe Z remesh it a little lower. Let's see if we get something. And see, at this point, this is where I would actually turn around and dynamesh it. Because it's it's clearly just one, but it has some really weird topology. So I would go up to geometry, hit dynamesh, and just kind of dynamesh it as one piece. So then I can turn around and Z remesh it, which will give me cleaner topology. This, that was weird. So, when in doubt. Ooh, ZBrush is unbeatable when it comes to modeling and textures. It has improved a lot with the insertion of cloth dynamics too, but it lacks the more polygon editing tool. It's very complicated there. Guy is lucky to know it is the most suitable option for modifying polygon, for example. Wow, that's huge. Uh, can someone... I don't know, man. Uh, why doesn't ZBrush have more straightforward and simple polygon editing tools? I can't really answer that, but what I do suggest is that, you know, keep your topology as low as possible. Um, ZRemesher is a great option, but there is actually some control that you can do to kind of guide your edge loops a little bit. But at the end of the day, if you really do need clean topology, uh, it's best to uh, look into uh, manual topology, which... We all know it's a love-hate. <laughs> uh, is this a unicorn sea creature? It kind of will be, yeah, right? Hey, congrats, I aren't joining the Zebra stream team. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know, it's awesome, I love it. Already having fun, guys. All right, let's take the normal move brush. And we're just gonna kinda, bloop. Example mask and delete. Yep. <laughs> Let's make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff, yeah. So let's actually put back the kind of reference that I've pulled. And for those of you who are just joining, uh, welcome in. And we're going to be doing, I believe we pronounce this an Olifist. Olifist. It's a uh, Celtic mythology sea creature. Very much like, you know, the, uh, the, um, Loch Ness Monster. Almost drew a blank. So, kind of playing a little bit off of that. Alright, let's actually go ahead and open this mouth a bit. And right now we're still just really looking for shapes. That's the main important thing, is to just really play around and see what your silhouette is looking like. And I'm getting that creature vibe right here, so not not too shabby, but we're gonna have to start really pulling up some uh, good detail. So let's hit BCB for a clay buildup. And we're actually gonna go ahead and turn back face on, which for those of you who don't know, we go to, we go to brush, auto masking, and then we have back face. We can turn that on. I created a little shortcut up here, but this way what we can do is actually come into his mouth and start sculpting where his gums would be and apply some material there. About finished with Scorpion. You answer these chats very quick. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, yeah. I, I, I love just hanging out and talking, so you guys talk, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> You're about to finish Scorpion, just trying to decide on the base now. Should I make a simplified chess piece style base uh, on, go crazy? What's, ooh, that sounds really cool, Inspire. Honestly, yeah, I would say go nuts with the base, man. Because uh, if you're doing a bust, that's like, it's all character right there. And so, yeah, having some sort of... um. Having a really cool bust to go with it, yeah, that's just gonna help out so much. 
All right, let's go ahead and kind of get where the gums would be. Hey, what's happening? Have you ever gave up on a character or a project? Uh, yes, I have actually. Um, actually, I do it all the time. <laughs> um, I've given up a lot uh, because sometimes, sometimes it's best to just stop if you don't think the project is going really well. Like if you're working with a client, you know, you and you've taken the job, you were pretty certain you can do it. Um, but when you're messing around and you're just like doing your own thing, sometimes that's the best learning experience. And so it's really helpful to just fail and just play around and see what happens. At the end of the day, like you're really doing this for you, right? So I've done several projects where I was just sculpting away and I hated everything about it. And, you know, I, I knew what I did wrong, but I was like, yeah, okay, this is, um, it's not really working. And then I just threw it away. Um, but what I try to take from those experiences is why it got away from me. And sometimes it's just a matter of knowledge. And sometimes it's just a matter of experience where maybe you're trying something you didn't think you could pull off. So you're figuring it out and it didn't quite work, but that's the experience you learn from. So keep pushing it, but don't be afraid to fail. Um, failing is actually your greatest tool for succeeding. I think that sounded really deep, <laughs> but no, seriously, that's, um, that's how it's been for me. So looking forward to this one. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's the secret to not give up on a project? Oh, that's a great question. Um, honestly, enjoy what you're sculpting. I sculpt a lot of fan art, guys. A lot of fan art. Um, in fact, I have a My Mini Factory where I have fan art stuff. Um, if you guys would like to see, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of projects I did real quick. So we're going to go big screen here. But um, I did this uh, Street Fighter uh, Chung Lee versus Vega out of the scene from the Street Fighter movie and this project was a lot of fun it took about three four weeks um, to really lock it in and get it right and then get it printable um, as you can see here actually she kind of pops right off and yeah but um, enjoy what you're sculpting and things you would love to have and that would really just kind of help you. Um, oops, sorry. I just totally realized I didn't go full, full screen. Let's go back one more time. <laughs> so you guys can see this one. Here we go. So yeah, it's all about enjoying what you sculpt. That's really going to be the most helpful for you. Um, but yeah. So that's the Street Fighter project I did. And it was just my own take on the on the scene in the film, which was a lot of fun. Really like how it turned out. Thanks, man. Me too. Yeah, it's amazing what happened when you sit in front of a project. Yeah, it really can. <laughs> you turn it turn into a mess, right? Yeah, it's really amazing when you can sit down and make something really cool. Um, but you know, it's also really cool is just giving something a a try, and seeing where it goes from there. Worst case scenario is that it doesn't work out a hundred percent. Um. Also, too, knowing when you need to kind of, like, stop a project and kind of just evaluate what's going on. Sometimes the biggest thing is that people like to sculpt really fast, and I believe you get faster with time. But for me, I, like, I find myself noodling a lot where I'll add something, and then I'll look back and I'll stare at it a bunch. Before I proceed, I try to slow myself down, and it becomes very helpful and I've caught a lot of mistakes just by doing that. How, uh, let's see here. Amazing. Oh, I didn't show it well. Do you guys need me to show you? I can show it to you again, <laughs> sorry. Uh, pretty neat, yeah. I seem to keep myself interested in being excited about the piece I'm making and by challenging myself to do something that seems a little beyond my current abilities. You and me both, Kamara, all the time. I go a little bit harder every day with the sculpts. I always push a little bit more. 
How did you 3D print Vega's claws? Oh, I 3D printed it in resin. Um, I have an Epax X1 machine, which is kind of like uh, an Elgu Mars. Um, very small machine, but I, I did that in resin. Yeah. How long from start to finish on that piece? That piece in particular was about four weeks. Start to finish all the way, including printing. No, no problem, no problem. Feel starting anything in ZBrush is a turd, then you sculpt it into a work of art. Yes. Actually, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Everything kind of comes out looking really cruddy, and then after a while, it ends up looking... If you just keep working it, it just ends up looking pretty good. I would say any given sculpt is going to look kind of so-so uh, and until you kind of figure out what you're doing with it. Then after that, um, you just keep layer, layering after layers. And two, I'm kind of looking at the anatomy, just kind of applying what I know of the uh, of creature anatomy and human anatomy. And you just kind of just keep working it. A sculpt takes as long as it takes, in my opinion. So if it takes you four months, it takes you four months. But, you know, make that make that a uh, in that time period. Just always kind of continuously look at your model and don't be afraid to get feedback. But and, unless you have a very strict deadline and you're just learning, you just you're just starting out. It takes as long as it takes. Try not to rush it. Enjoy the process as much as you can. Scientists learn from their fails. Yep, exactly. I was thinking about right. I'd rather make 20 sketches than two masterpieces. Yeah. I feel too unproductive making only two. Yeah, you you, you can, but, you know, yeah. Take just... Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to sketch. Don't be afraid to remember why you're doing it in the first place. And for me, it's always just to have fun and make something cool. And and yeah, each project can be a learning experience. And sometimes you just need to jump in there and make something. And it doesn't have to be for anybody but yourself. <laughs> exactly. Nobody cares about fails. Yeah, nobody's. Nobody's worried about that. <laughs> it's okay to do it. Yeah. Were Vegas Claws printed in a separate piece? Actually, Vegas Claws were printed uh, attached to his hand because his hand is only like 18 millimeters. It's pretty small. Layering truly is the secret. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it really is. Yep. This one is starting to look like a Nestle. Yep, that's right. <laughs> We're going to go a little bit uh, grotesque with them. It's going to be fun. I'm even thinking about maybe let's add a little bit more. Let's give them a little bit more uh, like fins or something. So let's actually come down here. Oop, that's a little bit big. Yeah, that's a little bit. I'm trying to find a good spot. Let's add a little one. There we go. Oh, my sculptress is not turned on the way I wanted it to. There we go. That makes more sense. How about that? <laughs> I recommended I turned on sculptress and I did not do that. Yeah, there we go. This is going to be fun to pose. I have an idea, but we won't know until we get there. Hey, what's up, game? Gaming Mania? How you doing? Think, think. Hello, all. Hello. How oh, you did it? How did I do which one? The are we talking about the um, the snake curve? It's just the new brush, BS, and then one, and then just draw a line, and just grab it and start pulling out. Get a good angle sometimes too. There we go. That kind of just helps us right there. Okay, gotta run, have fun. All right, Inspire, thanks for stopping by. So yeah, with the, with the snake curve, just kind of draw your line, have sculptures turned on, 
which Sculptress Pro can be found under Stroke and Sculptress Pro. And then draw your line. And then kind of drag that out a little bit. Actually, yeah, a couple of those look pretty cool. Snake Curve, yes. Yep, it is the Snake Curve. It's one of the new brushes, and they're pretty cool. I'm really liking them. And when you're done with that, to get rid of the curve, just tap somewhere on the surface, and I get rid that get rid of it real quick. That get rid of it. I have to go too. Good luck, man. Thank you so much, gaming. All right, let's start working on. Yeah, his head looks a little teeny, right? So I have this with a different poly group because when you uh, use balloon mesh, it automatically gives you a different poly group. So we can go ahead and just isolate this one. Got a little space there, just gonna delete it in. We can hit uh, control shift to touch and isolate. Hit control just to kind of tap it so it masks it. Hold shift control to tap again and then control tap to invert. That will allow us to select a poly group and then get a different mask. And then let's hold alt and center the gizmo and then we're just going to scale that up. There we go. So it's a little bit bigger. His head looks a little tiny. Do I always sculpt in skin shade four? Actually, I do. Yeah, for the for the most part, it's a little bit of a habit. Um, I just like it a little bit better. Um, although, one of the materials I really really love is uh, the orb material, which I think is on Art Station, but it's a fun little material. Um, if I were to go ahead and hit load, I have it over here under my documents. Oops, go back. ZBrush uh, brushes. Bloop. Materials, orb material. This one's fun. Because it kind of gives you just a nice little bit of depth and stuff. But at the end of the day, yeah, most of the time I, I'll use... Uh, uh, skin shade four or the other one I'll use a lot is basic material which let's actually stick to that one right now that's gonna help me a bit there we go let's get this open a bit more this way I know you guys can see I know skin shade four can be a little weird sometimes I highly recommend streaming in 1080 if your upload is not good. Reduce the frame rate to 12 frames because UI and what you're clicking is important to see. Okay, cool. I will note that down. Thank you, Interactive. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get this kind of beast mouth looking a little bit more. Love the new brushes. Yeah, me too. You can also turn on ambient occlusion. Yep. Which I love. I love to use that as well. Render ambient occlusion preview. Yeah, you can turn that on. I usually don't turn that on too much until once I get some simple shapes in because I'm used to not having it on but it's such a cool feature too. Need any help? Stop by, I can help you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that interactive. Noah Games, love the new brushes. Yep. Okay, let's actually get an I in here. So I'm gonna hit B, I, and then T, which gives us the standard IMM primitives. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab a low poly. Let's get polysphere. And I'm just going to kind of drag that out. So that I can actually start playing with where the eyes are going to be. And let's go to subtool. And then we're going to go ahead to split on mass. 
and then I'm gonna select it, hit rename, and call this eyes. I, I try my best to keep the names saved as much as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and save. I told you guys to save a lot. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get these cheeks kind of pulled out a little bit. Now I'm going to hit the clay brush. I usually use just a few tools. Move brush, clay brush, snake hook. Those are my main go-to. And in this case right now, I'm gonna actually hit apply because the, uh, let's turn that off. That way I actually have some topology to work with. There we go. Just gonna kind of build up his cheekbones. Start getting some eyelids. There we go. I'm gonna carve in there just a bit, just to get some eyelids. Now we want it. There we go. Do I adjust the Sculptures Pro settings? Uh, not too often. Sometimes it depends if I want to try to get fine detail. I don't use Sculptures Pro as much. Um, as some others. I'll definitely use it for the newer brushes, but I used to not be a fan, but I'm slowly being converted. <laughs> How to get better forms is it something that comes from experience. It's a little bit of experience, but a little bit of practice too. Um, one of the things you can do is kind of look up, uh, look up anatomy charts and get a sense of how the forms will flow and then try to trace over them with the, uh, you know, with your um, mesh balloon. But yeah, it's a little bit of experience too, but just keep practicing and constantly check it to some sort of reference in the beginning. That will help you identify forms and shapes a lot, uh, a lot easier. Do you mind sharing your workflow around working in symmetry at a posed mesh? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, I actually don't mind sharing that. Um, you might have to elaborate a little bit more on what you might want to see specifically, but as I get closer and closer to posing, I will definitely be covering a lot of that. And I actually have a trick on how to do posable symmetry, which is under transform. Um, it's a little bit of prep, and it's not always guaranteed, but... There are some things you can do to make your life a little easier. Okay. Okay, let's kind of just get this pushed around a little bit. Go back to some clay buildup. Again, still just kind of working with forms and just getting a quick sense of what it might look like. And this kind of looks more like a dinosaur than a than a dragon per se. And I kind of like that vibe. So we'll kind of meet it in the middle. Kind of go dragon-ish. But maybe we'll get like a little bit of a dinosaur vibe. I know that may not make sense. But <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hmm. Time for me to go, Ian. Very late here. Have a good rest of your stream. Bye, all. Bye, Alex, man. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. At what stage do you plan on slices? Are you thinking before the print as to how you're going to slice it? Or do you just sculpt and think of that later? That's a great question. And it's a little bit of both. What I tend to do is when I first consider doing a project, I'm kind of thinking about how I want to pose it. 
but sometimes I won't have a full idea unless I'm working from concept. So in this case in particular, I'm more worried about getting the basic T-pose shape of it. And then from there, once I, I start figuring out the pose, so then I can figure out how to slice it. Um, I usually don't worry about the posing part quite yet, unless, like I said, I have a concept. In this case, what I'm going to be doing is kind of just seeing uh, how close I can get the creature to where I like it, and then decide how I want to pose them once I get something that I'm liking. Because I'm kind of concepting a little bit from all of my reference. So I'm not just following this to the letter. I have other things I want to look at to kind of get an idea. So for this project, it'll be a little bit on the fly, but I'm going to be explaining that as I get closer to it for sure. Hopefully that makes sense. Is this underwater scene that is there? Which render engine did you use? Um, this is just this is just a concept art. I'm using Pure for this, but it will be. Uh, yeah, he's yeah he's an underwater creature for sure. I have a couple ideas on how I want to pose him, but not quite. Uh, not quite settled on one yet. But we will get there. <laughs> I just started sculpting like a week ago and I think I'm getting a good grasp of it, but I'm struggling with so much. Uh, you're struggling so much with forms. That's okay, Navi. Just keep practicing and take a look at uh, some real world references that will help you uh, kind of see a little bit more over time. A lot of it is just time and uh, practice, which I know a lot of people say, and sometimes that can be a little discouraging, but um, I promise, yeah. If you just started out, just kind of enjoy the journey a little bit. Don't be afraid to study a little bit of anatomy and just kind of, uh, just kind of see what you got going. You know, just play around with it, experiment, try different styles. And if something's not working, don't be afraid to put it down and walk away and try something else and then come back to it later. Okay. So we're just working with his eyelid a little bit. Let's actually lower the intensity. And hold Alt and kind of pinch this eyelid a bit. I'm going to hit the move brush a bit and just kind of open up his eyes a little bit. There we go. So even though it might seem like I'm starting details, I'm really not. I'm just kind of putting down clay and just seeing what looks cool and what I would like to keep and then trying to fix the rest. So I'm still kind of just blocking out at the moment. Uh, sorry for jumping it. Wait, hold on. Well, let's see here. Restream not showing on Twitch below. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with Restream. Let's see. Sorry for just jumping in. Do you Dynamesh right away or wait a bit until needed? Uh, I don't actually Dynamesh that often, 3D Sorcery. Not too much. It depends. Sometimes I'll Dynamesh if I want to, like, kind of fix errors or just sketch, but... For the most part, I just kind of work with a Z remesh sphere and then subdivide as I go. Um, it's just a little bit cleaner workflow for me. Thanks for sharing. I am too used to sculpting in T-pose and didn't know which stage I should move on to posing a character. Oh, that, well, Nasty, uh, what I would say is T-pose. I sculpt the T-pose until until I'm comfortable with breaking it. Um, I've known uh, artists that take it all the way, and I've done it myself, where I take it all the way to final, where it's super detailed, and then you like you drop it to a super low uh, poly count, and then pose it, and then try to project back and fix. Um, it really is just dependent on your comfortability at that point. Sometimes the best thing to do is uh, just kind of play pose around, like pick a spot where you're like, is this working? Pose it. Sometimes the shapes don't really stand out until you pose it. 
So just kind of play around a little bit and yeah, really posing that all comes down to when you feel comfortable, when you want to test something or when you're ready to, to really lock in the character. Yeah, good to know. Thanks. Will you be streaming again or is this a one-off? I can't see anything on my calendar. Um, no, I should be streaming, every, uh, scheduled to stream every Sunday around at the same time. I think the restream bot has been weird for a few days. Yeah, restream has been weird for me on my personal account, so. Holy damn, I found this class too late. <laughs> when can I find your classes from start to finish? Or are you one of the students of Shane Olson? I actually, I am a student of Shane Olson, but I am starting to create my own courses uh, slowly but surely. Right now, I just kind of freelance and I stream uh, just to show people how to sculpt, take questions, etc. But I do have a course in mind for later. But no, this is not a one-off. <laughs> uh, what is the good poly count for 3D printing? Is there anything special that needs to be done to get the files ready? Jose, um, I recommend decimating, but there isn't a specific poly count. Whatever works without destroying the model. But if you go to Z plugin and you drag that over here, whenever your poly count is, I've worked as high as 70 million and as low as 2 million. At the end of the day, you just come up to uh, Decimation Master and um, you just decimate it low. Usually like 20, 30% should work. Will they be for beginners or uh, mid to pro levels? They'll be for beginners. Absolutely. I love getting, I love helping people get started in ZBrush. So how long have you been working in this industry? Um, I've been working in the industry for about three years. I used to sculpt miniatures for the film industry before the pandemic. And then I decided to just do uh, freelance and teach. And right now I just openly teach on Twitch um, and here. And then um, I'm going to be coming up with some courses, hopefully in the next couple months. Yeah, thousand tops some slicers can't handle over that. Yeah, I would take it down. I mean, decimate it to like, if I had to give you a, num a number, 250,000 is pretty good number for a sub tool. But yeah, try not to take it too high. Or do you, let's see here. Sorry, this don't want to miss anything. Uh, do you retopo and rig in another program? Uh, then bake detail. Actually, I do pretty much most of my workflow is in ZBrush. I'd say because I work with toys, I don't have to worry too much about retopoing unless it absolutely calls for it. And rigging, I usually use T pose to to mod, uh, to pose my models. I usually stay in ZBrush like 95% of the time. But I, I have gone into other programs and stuff. If you want to know more about that stuff, you can always hit me up on my private stream since this is more dedicated to ZBrush. Um, hey, I am there. Awesome. Uh, do you ever sculpt scenery terrain? Yes, yeah, from time to time. As somebody who does, uh, since I've done one, uh, like statues that actually have environments, um, I've studied a little bit on it, but not specifically terrain or scenery as, as just that. Usually it complements the, the sculpture I'm working on. Uh, yes, Lynch. Yes. Or Lee, Lynch. Hopefully that's right. Uh, nice man. Tipo seems to be so slow. Or is it just me? Um, it depends on the size of your model. If your T pose is pretty slow, it could be that your model's too dense. So try to, uh, try to Z remesh it, get it down pretty low, project details after subdividing, and that will take you a little bit better. Get you a little bit closer. There we go. But as far as like uh, courses and stuff, when I get something put together, I'll definitely make an announcement on that if you guys are interested. Right now, I'm just currently working on a few, uh, a few gigs, which is always fun. 
trying to create a pipeline workflow as well. And yeah, toys is one of the objects I would be seriously interested in. Nice. Yeah, for toys and stuff, like I said, you could pretty much stay in ZBrush, but yeah, there are other programs and stuff too. Uh, make terrain in lumber yard. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What we're going to do is actually give him some teeth right now. And so what I'm going to do is actually come on up, grab the uh, IMM primitives. And what I'm going to do is actually just get a sphere real quick. No, actually, let's get a capsule. I'm going to hit solo. I'm actually just going to go ahead and drag it in the middle. Of course, it won't let me because I have subdivisions. So I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this. Go to geometry, delete lower. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drag out one in the middle. We're just dragging out a capsule. I'm going to hit shift F to give us uh, the polygroups. I'm going to actually tap on the capsule and then go ahead and delete hidden. Turn off solo so we can see what's going on. Now we're going to make a tooth out of this one capsule. So we're just going to kind of get that situated. I'm just going to mask that off. Let's grab the mask lasso for that. Let's actually hit X for symmetry, send this in the middle, drag this up, and then kind of scale this down a little bit. So we get something like this. And then we're actually going to go ahead and kind of squeeze this together. And I'm going to want to bend this, so I have a little cool bend trick where I grab the gizmo, change it to the transpose tool by hitting Y, dragging a straight line by holding shift, hold alt and hover over the middle circle. And you can actually kind of bend this, which is pretty cool. And let's actually select this little area right there. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's kind of bring that down a bit. So now we kind of get this little bend on the tooth. And let's just grab our move tool. And now we're just going to kind of make it work. Make it work for us. Hey, how long should a decent character take the sculpt? Um, honestly, the answer I give is it takes as long as it takes. Um, that depends, of course, on the amount of detail and the actual concept. But um, if you're doing just private characters, you know, on average, a couple weeks um, or in a few days, you can have something um, if you're just kind of sketching. But for a decent character, so assuming your question actually refers to like something usable for production, um, it could take a few weeks easily to get something decent. Um, again, that just depends on the project, but it also depends on your experience. If you're something that's new, my first character I ever sculpted like four years ago was, it, it took like eight hours and I had this little ugly fish thing. Um, <laughs> but then now uh, in, a, in a few hours, I can have a block out, but nowhere, nowhere near usable until... I would say a couple days worth of playing around with it. It could take time. It just depends. I do have an Instagram. Yeah. If you guys would like to go check out my, uh, my socials, you can actually catch me right here. Hopefully that sends a link in. But yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Team Weird. Do you have tutorials for sale? Sorry for so many questions, but what about world building? Do you touch on stuff like trees? I love your questions. So they are awesome guys. Like all your questions are amazing. So um, when I come up with something, I'm gonna block something out. I'll probably, it'll probably take me like a couple months to get something that would be usable because I've kind of been playing with a few ideas, but um, yeah, there's more than just character sculpting and the more you hang out with me in my streams, the more you'll see that I kind of just touch on everything. Um, but yeah, I would love to cover that stuff. And if that's stuff you guys want to see, that's stuff I want to bring to the table. So I'm missing the link for your YouTube. Um, I just dropped it right now. Hopefully that works. Let's see. Uh, is there a way to mask something without any AA whatsoever? 
uh, like masking one side of a plane or single poly, for example, JR? Um, that's a great question. Okay, so you want to mask a, a certain thing. So here, real quick, let's actually save. Yes, there kind of is. It's tricky. To answer your question, JR, it's, it's a little tricky, but I'm going to grab a cylinder for this. So if you want to mask something specifically for, you know, like one, like one, uh, I can't speak, <laughs> like one poly group, um, that's where the Z modeler is going to be your best friend. So B, Z, and then M, that's going to be your best friend apps, you know, because then what you can do is you can zoom all the way in and actually hover over the face. Oh, wait, here, I have to hit Polymesh 3D or else it's not going to work. Okay, so if you have your cylinder, you made Polymesh 3D. Let's actually back this up. So, again, Z model is your best friend, so B, Z, M. Come in here, hover over the face, tap, hold Alt and tap it. And then you're going to select a different poly group. Then you can hit the space bar, which will give you a bunch of options. And then from here, you can actually type, you know, hit poly group and then you can actually touch that little white spot and that will change it. And then from there, just hold control shift and touch that poly group. And that should work for you. Or you can, but yeah, for masking, you can even just kind of come in here with your mask lasso and just mask a section off. Found it, awesome. Just give him one tooth in the middle. That's adorable. There you go, right? What's your opinion on Speed Tree and World Builder for world building? Um, I do not have an opinion on that. Uh, let's say you just only want to mask the top part of that cylinder without any anti-aliasing on the sides for applying an alpha or something, for example. Okay, so if you want to mask like only the top part of this area, without any anti-aliasing. Again, it always depends on your geometry. So you would definitely want to have, like on the top of the sphere, you'd actually want to add a couple edge loops. Um, but first, before you can do that, what I would recommend is actually go to, uh, yeah, go to polygroups and group by normals. There we go, yeah. Group by normals, and that will go ahead and actually you can select, should give you, oh my gosh, right when you want it to work, right? There we go. So you can select, you can hit group by normals, select a different poly group on that, or what you can do is actually hold alt, come in here, and actually select that, and like I said, grab poly group and fill. And then you can hold control shift to select that, tap control to mask and that will mask that one side but as you can see yeah there is fall off here so this is where you'd want to actually have really good geometry so you'd actually want to add some edge loops to kind of give you that control the mass is always going to fall off to the nearest edge loop so you want to have really good uh want to have a good edge loop as much as possible kind of select that area tap that mask it and that that should help you a little bit, but it is dependent on your geometry. Yeah, uh, the links are working for me. Okay. Sorry if the links aren't working. Interesting. Here, if you want to, let me take you to my art station. That'll take you everywhere else. There you guys go. Thank you so much. Uh, which one is better? Or ZBrush? I'm rocking the AMD... Um, I'm rocking the AMD 7, and it works out great for me. Where's that tooth? Where's that tooth? There it is. Yeah, it works. Perfect. Is a tablet necessary for sculpting in ZBrush? It is highly recommended. <laughs> I have met somebody who's used the mouse. Um... The way ZBrush is built, it is highly recommended that you use a tablet because of pen pressure. 
but I I personally know somebody who uses a mouse. Um, just saying, I don't recommend it, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so I would say try to use a tablet, and you can get a really affordable one. You don't need anything too crazy. You don't need one with a screen either. Just you know, uh, I use like XMD, and I had like their basic. Their basic, like, $20, $30 one, and it worked out great for a long time. I currently use an XMD Artist tablet, which does have a screen, but yeah, it just makes it easier. So yeah, that's that's my opinion on it for sure. It's highly recommended, that is for sure. Okay. Nope. Hitting too many things. There we go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and kind of move this around and we're going to place these. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off symmetry. And the thing I want to pay attention to is that I'm actually going to be mirror and welding this from the left to the right. So get some water real quick, but we're going to go ahead and start posing the teeth. Is a display really worth the cost? Ooh, that's a, that's tough. It's tough to say. For me, it was worth it, but I almost felt like I had buyer's remorse in the beginning. Um, I'd say it makes it worth... It makes it... Mm, how do I put this? It can speed up your workflow, but it's not going to make you a better sculptor. You know what I mean? It can make your workflow a little bit more comfortable, but it's... You know, if you're just trying to learn, it's not going to make it so that you're top-notch. You know what I mean? That's... It. Yeah, it's just not—it's not, not going to improve your performance, but it's just going to make your workflow a little bit easier. That's all. I don't find it that I'm like all of a sudden really night and day difference of, you know, the tablet didn't make me; I made the tablet. There you go. <laughs> uh, my tablet is broken, so I've been stuck with a mouse for a couple months. Oh no. Yeah, take a look. There are some uh, affordable ones. I highly recommend it. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna just start placing teeth everywhere. Last question. No, it doesn't have to be your last question. Uh, when you first started out, did you take Shane Olson's classes to get you up to speed? Or did you learn on your own, but took his classes anyway? Woo, so a little bit about me is um, I actually started sculpting on my own. Um, I was playing around with a couple programs, nothing too crazy. Um, but when I wasn't improving, that's when I started actually looking at where I can, where I could improve. And for me, I just needed some guidance. Um, so that's when I started reaching out and that's when I became a student of Shane's. Um, but I definitely tried it on my own. Pardon me. I definitely tried it on my own and then... Uh, from there, I realized it's something I wanted to do. That's when I decided to to seek help elsewhere. So uh, if you guys don't know what I'm doing, I'm actually just duplicating by hitting control and dragging. And as long as it's, as long as you don't have any subdivisions, you can just do that and start duplicating your, your stuff really quickly. Let's actually give him some baby teeth. And then what we can do is actually go to polygroups and auto groups, which will give us that. And then I'm actually going to go to geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. And that's going to give me all those different polygroups there. Now I can start playing with teeth. What did you mean? Tablet with screen. All the tablets have screen. <laughs> uh, one that like, actually acts like a monitor. In other words, would you recommend us uh, take his class first? Is it good up to speed? That's really up to you. Um, depends on, you know, I, I always say seek help where you can get it. Well, you know, you can learn a lot from watching people's streams, asking us questions. But yeah, if, you, if you're looking for guidance, definitely seek a class. And Shane Olson is awesome. Highly recommended. 100%. Uh, I learned ZBrush 
on my own. And then um, I ended up taking a class here in Los Angeles, where I'm from, at a place called Studio Arts when I was uh, still working for the film industry. And then after that, it was all about learning how to sculpt. So kind of a little bit on my own and a little bit, uh, a little bit from uh, courses here and there, but nothing too crazy. I just played around. I'm still learning ZBrush. Um, there's still just so much you can do for a program that seems like just made for sculpting. There's just so much here. So that it, there's a lot, which is what I appreciate. Okay. I'm going to hit control shift D to duplicate these teeth. I'm actually going to go ahead and rotate these around 180 and get this kind of situated so that he has teeth on the bottom and this way we can kind of see what we got going on here let's see is it worth subscribing to art station to learn i i don't know i haven't actually subscribed to art station to learn from to be honest so i can't answer that sorry i just say vet the place you want to learn from For 2D displays are great, for 3D displays are preference, I think. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what do you think of going to school for 3D modeling? I feel like I am progressing fine at home, but I have been, I'm being urged to go by my parents. <laughs> uh, that's, it's really what your your goal is. I, I personally haven't gone to college, but I have taken courses, like I said before, so Yeah, I, it's hard. You know, going to school is very beneficial too, but it all depends on what your goal is. Thanks for your help on our beginning. It really helps me more than you know. I plan on doing courses as well once I learn my way around ZBrush. Thanks a billion. Not a problem. Glad to help. I have a question. Do you extract the inside of the mouth to form the gums? Uh... So you can have the gums on a separate mesh. <clears throat> uh, usually I'll do it one of two ways. I'll um, I'll actually show you here in a second. But a lot of times I'll actually duplicate it and actually shrink it down. Sometimes I'll use extract. Uh, sometimes I'll just pull it out. But right now I'm just kind of blocking. So Psst. yeah. So I do it a few different ways. I'll show you here in a second. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Find a workshop. Yeah, that's okay. I was thinking there's just so many great resources. Yeah, there. Re yeah, there's a lot of resources online. Okay, we're actually going to go ahead. Come here. Well, that was turn on symmetry. In fact, here let's actually create the gums right now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate off this lower jaw. And I'm actually going to go and kind of clip this little section off. So I'm just going to get the select rec. Just going to grab this. And then I'm going to delete hidden. I'm actually going to go ahead and bring that up. And I'm going to close holes, which is under modified topology. So geometry, modified topology, and close holes. So it gives me this. I'm actually going to go ahead, send this in the center, and scale this down. And then kind of stretch that out. That's definitely use the forms you have. It can only make, it can make your job easier. And now you have some gums that you can work with. There we go. As someone who went to school for it but did not graduate as long as working games, I highly recommend not going to school. Okay, uh, let's see here. Our school, schools. Uh, thanks for the answer, guys. Yeah. Usually, how much? Uh, let's see here. Usually, how much it takes you to start and finish your sculpt, the final sculpt. Um, on average, for me, I think it, it takes me about. Hmm, 
I would say on average, it takes me about 20 to 30 hours to get something that's really good. Depends on how the level of detail and just depends on um, what I'm going for. Also depends on if I'm trying something that maybe doesn't quite work this time. So, you know, I, I start like kind of figuring it out. If I spend more time playing around or, or trying something new, it could take longer, but on average about 20, 30 hours, I'd say. But again, it just depends on, really just depends on you and what you're looking to get out of the sculpt. <laughs> Let's see. I'm a 2D pro artist. I'm trying to bridge my skills for 3D. Nice. Nice Mario music in the background. Do you polypaint even if it's not going to be printed in colors? I do, yes. It helps me see the character a little bit. It also helps me identify the high points and the low points. So yes, I, I will definitely. Okay, we're actually going to select this. His head's a little too far forward, in my opinion. So we're going to turn off symmetry, send it in the world, and then we're going to go ahead and hit the little pizza pie. Then I'm going to hit Shift and Control and tap the head, the horn, and the eye, and his teeth. And this will allow me to kind of move this around a little bit without ever having to go into T-Pose. And we can do the same thing here. We can actually, let's go ahead and deselect that stuff, grab this, that, and the other. And let's actually kind of put this here. Just stretch it a bit. Oh, time flies, man, it's almost seven, crazy. Yeah, this is really nice techniques for guns. I usually extract from the mouth and then try to fit under the teeth and sculpt the details and pull them out. Yeah, that's one. That's another way to do it. I try to use the shapes that I already have here. Um, and then sometimes too with the gums, I'll go ahead and actually do Control Shift D to duplicate. And then what I'll do is I'll just lift that up and rotate that around. Make sure symmetry is not turned on. I repurpose a lot of my sub tools. It's just helpful. And again, I'm just kind of playing around a little bit. And then let's turn symmetry back on and actually start pressing it. And of course, if we can't see what's going on, let's actually go to sub tool and we can turn off the lower parts that are bothering us and go back to the other part. Chiz. There. Right here, there we go. Let's turn off those lower teeth too. Also, I need to rename some of this stuff. So call it lower teeth. It really helps if you end up renaming. Uh, you can get lost too. So center horn, lower jaw, Call this lower gums. And then call this upper gums. Renaming saves tons of time, even though it feels like it takes <laughs> it takes too much time. I also like to kind of organize them as best I can. Alright, let's push this up a bit. Uh, by the way, the stream is amazing, Ian. Uh, I have been mostly lurking, but it is a blast to watch. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. It'd be nice to see who's called Tyrion Lannister and see Rush as a toy. That would be awesome. I, I might have to add that to the list. Is Z-Rush hard to learn? Um, no. I don't think it's hard to learn. I think ZBrush can feel overwhelming in the beginning, but there's a few, you know, if you just stick with a few basic brushes and just had to kind of start up your scene pretty quickly, um, 
It can seem overwhelming because there's a lot of information here, but with a few brushes and a couple things, you can go very far. So um, I'd say learn some of the basic stuff and then just kind of slowly progress one new thing at a time. There's just a lot here, but that's the cool part too, is that once you get the basics down, opening up other doors to things like nano mesh, uh, micro polys, you know, making sure, you know, that you have uh, brush modifications, all that stuff comes later once you get more comfortable. Let's see, uh, do you know if it's possible to center a sub tool on one axis? Usually Z if working axisymmetry. Thanks. I know if it's possible to center the sub tool. It is possible to center the sub tool. Um, anytime you do center, you send it to the world home. So you can actually just go ahead and hit home and that will center it. But to one access typically. Um, no, usually it's just kind of try to keep in the middle. Uh, a lot of times I find myself cutting corners by using previous tools or some external assets I downloaded to speed up my workflow. Do you ever do this? And do you ever feel a little guilty about it? Um, JC, no. I I don't feel guilty about doing it if the if there's a purpose for it. Anything that I have purchased and downloaded, like I've downloaded brushes and stuff, usually um, while I try to kind of make my own, at the end of the day, I'd say, you know, if you're supporting another artist, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't claim it as your own. But you're using it, call it out. Just say, hey, I'm using this brush. This is where I got it. And no, I think it's great. You, by downloading other assets from other artists and then you're acknowledging that you're doing that, I think I think that's very helpful to the community. Cool. Uh, let me know if you need a resource, especially when it comes to an art. It's saving. <laughs> I don't see how speeding up your workflow can be a bad thing. No, it's not. <laughs> speeding up your workflow works smarter, not harder. That's what I say. I spent three hours sculpting a hand yesterday, guys, and then I ended up mirroring it, you know, and then I saved it as a brush so that I don't have to worry about that in the future. Because sometimes I just want a hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you just need a hand. Mm, sounds good at some point. I'll need your help for when I branch out character art. Uh, let's see. Do I know what the F NFTs are? Um, I do know what they are. If you want to chat more about that, join me on my personal stream. I would love to talk more about that there. Hi, Ian. Uh, let's see. Go to your... Uh, let's see. Hey, Ian, uh, let's see. How did you know that 3D is your passion? Um, <laughs> I think I'm addicted to ZBrush. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew it was my passion because um, I actually started just wanting to do it all the time. Um, I just started sculpting and then I wanted to learn more about it. It was something that was just a natural progression for me where I just felt like I want to keep doing it. Um, so then I thought, am I even good at it? Can I get good at it? Um, then I started practicing. I found myself wanting to constantly improve and to look up resources. And for me, that was a big sign that, uh, I was passionate about 3D. Um, and while there was frustrations, at the end of the day, I was constantly just trying to, to better myself and look at how I could better myself. And that, that pretty much cinched it for me. Great advice. Awesome. Remember, I hope they adapt the demo line with the curves. Thanks for the stream. Looking good. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and actually turn some of this on. Wash hands. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and save this. It's been a while since I've saved it, I think. Uh, how can I make sure my export files are always the same size? I often export to do retopo in Maya and find some errors there and then go back and fix in ZBrush. 
when exporting my settings don't stay the same and I end up having to redo that all the time. Any tips on this? Yes. Uh, the biggest tip I actually recommend is creating a, a sub tool that you can base your whole size off of. Um, I covered it a little earlier today, so you'll be able to go back and watch that. But I would recommend inserting something like a cube and scaling this to, let's say, like 25.4 millimeter. Um, and also to check your export uh, export scaling down here at the bottom, which I'm going to see if I can blow that up. Um, typically, I have that set to one, which is default, and it seems to work OK for some other programs. But um, I would say use a sub tool, scale that to at least one inch, and then you can base everything off of that cube. That would be my tip. How did you turn your vin uh, vanilla yellow color blue? Oh. So if you go to preferences and you go to uh, eye colors, right here is usually the you know typical orange and such. You can actually go ahead and drag this and you can actually pick a new color. Say, let's pick green and go back to preferences, pick this one, call this one a little bit darker green and that's how you adjust those colors. So preferences, eye colors, and then these two right under push button. That'll change the color the way you want it. And then if you want to save that, make sure to go to config and save UI and then store it. And of course, too, if you don't like it, you can always hit restore custom and that'll send you right back. Okay. Let's actually come back on here and let's get a couple of this going here. Okay, so I'm actually going to want to kind of clean up this body a little bit. I don't want to detail the head too much too quickly. So what I want to do is actually take this whole shape and I actually should rename this body since that's what it is. In fact, I have two poly groups here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold control shift and select the jaw poly group. And we're gonna go ahead and hit split hidden and make sure that this body part is body. So let's go ahead and rename that body. And I wanna kinda of clean this up a little bit. You can see it's a bit of a mess. So what we're gonna do is Z remesh this to have a good flowing shape. So I'm just gonna hit solo just so we can see the difference. Make sure my symmetry is turned on. I'm gonna to go to geometry and Z remesher. And let's, let's keep this at like a three. I want it low so that I keep my, my file size as low as possible for as long as possible. There we go. And let's make sure, okay. When I Z remeshed, I actually had two different shapes from the bloom mesh, which can happen. So if that happens, what you can do is go to, let's back it up a little bit go to poly groups, hit auto groups, and then control tap, control shift tap on one of them and delete hidden. Cause we just have two different models. There we go. So we have this guy right here and I'm actually gonna take the jaw. I'm gonna do the same thing. So let's go ahead and solo this. I'm gonna go ahead and Z remesh it. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and touch one of these and delete hidden. I have some shortcuts built here. There we go. So now I have this shape going on and now I can start blending these in a little bit more. Let's go ahead and apply our subdivision and let's grab our clay buildup. And kind of work the spine a little bit. So I want to keep his neck separate a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with it. I just want to be able to keep it as separate mesh as possible. Just so I have a little bit more control in my sculpt. And I'm just kind of give it a little bit of volume here. So he's a funky little guy, isn't he? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Have you tried using the print hub under plugins? You can dial the size in there. Yes. Yeah, I covered that a little bit earlier today. Um, and I also have a YouTube video about that as well, if anybody's interested. Uh, are you using the FBX exported import or using Gozee? Should there, there should be no scaling there. I actually utilize, I go to export and then I actually select FBX here. I don't use the FBX plugin. Um, the FBX exporter importer. I don't use that. It seems to doesn't seem to always give me consistent results where export FBX does. Let's see. Uh, do you learn all the software for texturing, rigging all at once, uh, et cetera, at once? Uh, no, no, no. You you want to learn those in stages because they all present their own problems. So you want to learn those in stages. Uh, for me. It all started as a kid. Oh, the toy maker, Santa. <laughs> I would watch the shows and wonder if they could get a job. So working as elves. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and hit uh, Dan Standard. I'm gonna kind of work his little his little fin back here. Let's kind of pinch that a bit. There we go. Now, he's probably pretty slimy and pretty scaly, so I'm going to try to add like a little bit of wrinkles where I think they would make sense. And these aren't really... This is more information for me to kind of see how the sculpt is working. So... What I'm going to do is start taking the standard brush and just applying areas that I feel like should... Have, where bone or cartilage would be... And just kind of like, still just sketch out what I'm looking for. Understanding how something moves is super important. So right here, there would be a joint. So I'm kind of just like, dig that out a little bit. Same here. Let me bring up a little bit. I also turn on back face. There we go. So again, it's all about just kind of playing around. How often do I stream? I stream on my own personally um, throughout the week, about three days a week. And then I'm going to be streaming here uh, every Sunday. Let's kind of smooth that down a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to kind of to take a look at how reptiles, I'm going to take a look right here at how some of the skin of the reptile is forming because we're going to kind of make them reptilian a bit. So we'll get a little bit of joint action happening here or where their joint would be uh name some useless brushes in zbrush <laughs> uh brushes i don't use in zbrush i would say would be uh i've used so many of them a brush i don't use too much actually is slide i don't use that brush that often but yeah, who knows it might be super powerful should probably do that Ooh, I have a hole here. That's just interesting. So let's go to geometry, modified topology, and let's try to close holes. Where are we? Right there. Okay, I have subdivisions turned on. Interesting. Let's actually go ahead and get rid of the useless ones, and let's say close holes. There we go. That was interesting. That's okay. Like, give us working in dynamic subdivision. Uh, why FBX uh, versus STL? Well, if I'm exporting for a file for 3D print, um, I'll use STL. But if I if I end up using FBX, it's usually to send it to another program. Uh, if I may, for the person who's asking now, 
Uh, do you know that sculpting is your passion? I would say if you notice when you're playing with a toy, mud, or even playing with video games, there, <laughs> where's your attention? Oh, interesting. Wait, maybe I missed it. No, okay. Let's, I see what you're saying. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the trim dynamic. If you ever want to flatten something out really nicely but controlled, trim dynamic is probably your best friend. It's one of my favorite brushes, actually. And I'm going to click the select lasso. I'm actually going to grab this fin. Kind of just work a little bit on it. Like such here. Let's grab that right there. Are you playing the game or looking around and wondering? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. If you're playing a game and you have stuff that's catching your attention, that's usually a good sign that you're interested. That's a very good point. Can you sculpt a human? Yes, I can. Actually, one of my favorite projects that I'm currently working on, if you guys would like to see real quick, is actually, I have this Sub-Zero that I'm working on as well. And uh, he's gonna be for 3D printing. It's gonna be a nice little statue that uh, people can just download and have fun with. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that standard brush back. And let's start creating a little bit more shape and interest here. I think it'd be kind of cool to give him a little bit of a divided body so he doesn't look so uniform. There we go. Something like that. We might actually make his top part really scaly and the bottom part maybe a little bit smooth. So we'll actually kind of pull these shapes. Kind of already start setting that texture there. But we won't go too nuts. Yes. Yeah, all that makes absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah, you want to check your scaling and other programs for sure. Finish him. <laughs> That's super red, man. Well done on Sub Zero. Thanks. Yeah, he's uh still a little bit of a work in progress, but I'm enjoying it. Okay. Hmm. I think that uh oh, okay, you guys dig the sub zero. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. By the way, when it comes to scale, we do the same thing that Ian suggested. Yeah, keep the reference model in the background and use gizmo tool and scale things up or down. Never had any issues. Yep. Okay. Let's actually get this kind of a pointy little. So what I'm actually kind of thinking about right now for 3D printing is the plausibility of how this is going to be printed, right? And if we take a look at this crazy creature idea, there's a lot of just like spiraling and body morph morphing that is happening. So this is about the time where I'm becoming a little bit happy with how my my sketch is coming out or how the figure is coming out. And now I want to start kind of considering the next step um, in the creation process. And so from here, I think really what I'm going to want to figure out is how this will stand on its own. Will we make this a scene or will we end up making it uh, just a standalone figure? All those things are going to come into play here in a second. So as I'm constantly figuring out the character, especially for just concept sketching, I'm going to now start kind of considering how I want him to be. Um, and so I'm thinking that we'll probably have him almost swimming a bit. So this actually might be fun. 
to do like an anti-gravity base almost. Or end up having like kind of a cave effect. So the the closer I end up making the character, uh, like the, the closer I'm starting to see what I'm like, that's when I start kind of figuring out the, the vibe of it. And because he's so kind of bulky and big, I'm thinking that we might actually kind of elongate them and actually follow this twirling effect because this is actually pretty cool. And then we'll end up giving him a purpose maybe in the next stream of what we want to do. So let's save this out and let's actually play with an idea real quick. When they sculpt yourself in ZBrush Live. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and save as, and what we're gonna do is kind of play around a little bit. And I find that I do this quite often, where I'm not really sure exactly how I wanna pose them, so we're actually gonna do that. And it might seem like it's early in this stage, but for me, it really does just kind of help see the idea in my head before I go too far with detailing and such. So if I hit, um, let's move my concept out the way since it's kind of just there now. Um, if I go to Z plugin, I'm gonna go ahead and go to transpose master, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and send this on over. Now it's super low poly, about 85,000. And I'm only pointing that out because I like to work with small numbers, um, but it'll kind of give me a little bit more of a sense of what to do. And this will be just a test. This isn't actually anything that I'm going to keep unless I really dig something. Um, so let's find out. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and select this, kind of soften this up a bit. And I'm gonna just kind of move his body. So I'm gonna move the gizmo around. And I can kind of just warp this around a little bit. Kind of take a look at what I'm, kind of take a look a little bit actually about how the the movement I liked is, so I'm actually going to go down. So I backed it up, Control Z. And this is the part of sculpting where you can kind of just start kind of playing around with what you might end up liking. Turn on symmetry. Let's go ahead and just kind of mass lasso this spot here. Invert it, control tapping. And really just kind of seeing if there's something that stands out. Because here the decisions I make with if I keep them thinner, if I elongate them, those are all things I'm gonna be worrying about. So this is kind of like my time to just play around and see what I get. Do you work or have worked for games or collectibles only? Um, I have not worked in games, so I don't. I don't usually. I don't usually do games. I usually just do toys, uh, primarily um, collectibles or little figures or uh, even just stuff that gets 3D printed. Most of my stuff is 3D printed. I just love toys. <laughs> Do you ever use layer posing or would, uh, would you use that later? Or would you, uh, what would you use that for? Um, I don't use it for posing, no, but I do use it sometimes for expressions and also for painting. So it just kind of depends on, uh, layers can get tricky sometimes. So it really, for me, just depends on what the main sh uh, the main reason for using layers when it when doing facial expressions, um, I find that it's helpful because you don't have to commit to it. But posing, um, if you have multiple sub tools, that becomes an issue, and you'd have to merge it all. It it gets a little bit problematic. Where T pose, that's kind of the idea, because it's its own sub tool. I can kind of just do my own thing and see what I like and what I don't like. And I'm actually thinking I'm liking this guy skinnier now that I'm kind of pushing him a little bit more. 
so like I said, I use T Post Mesh a lot for most of this stuff. I'm gonna set this here. So kind of looking at what the concept was. Yeah, I'm thinking that that's maybe what I'm gonna do. Do I have a Discord? I do have a Discord, yes. Uh, it's mainly there just for fun artists. Uh, just guys that come in, people to come in, have fun, hang out. It's for anybody who just wants to hang and, and, and share their work. So you can find it there. Bottom, bottom link should be the Discord link. I've been modeling. I've been using ZBrush for four years, but I, I also have a little bit of uh, CAD design because uh, I worked in aerospace for a few years. Worked in aerospace for like 12 years. That's a few. <laughs> that's a few for some. Okay. So while this looks like a broken mess, and it is, um, what this allowed me to do was kind of see what I like about my model and kind of playing a little bit with the concept. And I'm thinking I'm actually wanting to push it more towards this. This concept is really appealing to me. Um, and we kind of did like a little bit of a bubble gut, but I felt like maybe that was restrictive and not quite the character. So I'm actually gonna pull away from that and we're actually gonna go more towards this style, which I think is pretty cool. So let's go back to our main model, which is this guy right here. So all I did was when you Go to T-Pose Mesh, it kicks up a brand new section over here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and type right in here. And now we're gonna make those changes. So I have a reference of what it is I liked and what it is I didn't like, and I can constantly refer back to that. And now I didn't lose my symmetry, I didn't break my model. I can just kind of go ahead and start playing. So I'm actually gonna take them a little bit skinnier. I think that's going to be the best. So we can just kind of bring that in a little bit and it'll be cool. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, is layers for uh, is layers used for blocking out a character or joining all the sections at the end? I saw this from another artist out there. Layers can be pretty much used if you come over here to layers. Layers can pretty much be used for anything from moving your model around to adding paint to uh, even adding textures. But I find in my workflow, layers are very have very specific purposes. And one of the purposes is just when I'm not ready to commit to something yet, but I need to see it on that sub tool, I'll play around at layers. But um, there are some pretty talented artists out there who use our uh, layers a lot better than I than even I do so But it is a fun tool and I play with it often because you never know what you're gonna get and that's the cool part All right, it's that sticky key shrink that down a little bit So yeah, we're gonna go a little bit skinnier And I want this whole thing to flow pretty well. And this whole scaling looks a little bit funky. So we're actually going to go ahead and bring this down. And we're just going to kind of tap that in a little bit. As you see with the new features now, you just kind of get something that you like. And then um, I bounce around. Just keep working on it, you know. Let's get the jaw anatomy happening. There we go. So we got about half hour more, guys. Uh, so we'll be continuing this project every Sunday. And if I do anything to the project, I'll always go over it in the beginning. Because sometimes I just can't help myself and I just have to, have to jump in there and try something new. <laughs> so let's go ahead and actually... Start adding in a little bit of neck right here. Who knows? Maybe we'll end up giving him a hand after all. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab the damn standard and kind of get this area pinched a little bit, blending that in to this area right there. 
The real trick is just making sure that everything makes sense, which is always fun. And then we could take the standard brush and kind of inflate that a little bit. There we go. Uh, do I have a video of my setup? I do not have a video of my setup, but uh, I, I can always make one. <laughs> Yeah, that was the fastest two and a half hours ever. <laughs> yeah, it did go by really quickly. Well, hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself and hopefully you guys are having fun because I just love talking about this stuff and I can pretty much talk about it all day. You can ask anybody who knows me. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go ahead and kind of push that down a little bit. I'm actually getting ready to want to merge the neck in with the body. Even though the body isn't really, it's still a work in progress. It's kind of just helping me see everything, so. And the other thing too I want to cover is flow. So if we kind of take a look at like how his belly is formed and how we have this kind of S curve happening, um, at the top it doesn't really do that and it kind of drops. So we're gonna want to have the flow of the belly kind of do the same thing here. So let's actually grab our move brush and it's super important to get that vibe and that feeling working uniform. You don't want conflicting shapes. It kind of throws off the model. So we're going to go ahead and kind of match the top to the bottom a bit, especially since we decided to go from bubblegum to uh, um, snake like. So <laughs> I don't know what else to call a wide belly. <laughs> no. There was space to ZBrush. Wow. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, one of your uh, video. Can you have <laughs> just replay? Nice inspiration there. Yeah, I'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> There we go. And also too, really looking at this now, I'm taking a step back and I do this all the time where um, I'll actually kind of look away from my project and look back at it. His face is too narrow. I don't, I don't like how narrow this is. So I'm gonna actually back that up. I'm gonna go ahead and actually select his teeth. I'm not going to select his eye, but I'll select his gum. In fact, I won't select his teeth either. Let's just do his gum in his head and his horn. And we're going to stretch that because his head does not match his body. And we want a really creepy character. So we're going to really like kind of push this and get that to the next level as much as possible. We'll touch his eyes and we'll actually just move his eyes forward. So let's just kind of bring his eyes forward. There we go. Same with his teeth. You can always add more teeth. Kind of bring that in a little bit. Let's actually scale this down. And the beauty part about having something that you're duplicating, mirror and welding. You can actually just delete the side that you don't need. If you want to make major changes, you can delete hidden and then you can actually change what you need and then go back to mirror and weld. And that will, that helps me a lot. I use that trick almost all the time. Let's actually delete these teeth because we'll just duplicate them again. And give them a much longer and maybe more terrifying mouth shape. And that's another tip I have too, is it's okay to have like, um, it's okay to have like temporary sub tools, things that maybe you're not committed to, but it's there and it serves a purpose as just kind of waiting for you to make that decision. But you have something there to kind of go off of.
What's your advice besides knowing ZBrush to become a toy sculptor? Are there ways to study a figure uh, so we can show that we know uh, uh, how to fit, uh, yeah, know to fit the pieces together? Yes, actually, so here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys. Um, so most of everything I do is for, you know, um, for 3D printing, some manufacturing. So when you're looking at an art station, here's mine, for example. One of the things to that I showcase enough is really just that I know how to do the the figure, uh, that I know the anatomy, that I know how something gets put together, how something flows. Um, if you're doing stuff for toys, how to break it apart. It's really important. Um, and even that it's printable that you can actually make the thing that you sculpted. Um, that's a big one. But I would say, depending on what it is you're trying to make, whether it be trees, humans, aliens, doesn't matter. Shh, learn the anatomy of that thing. Everything has anatomy. So learn the anatomy of that thing. And from there, uh, kind of showcase how that, um, how that anatomy plays in your model. And it will really kind of just work itself out the more you learn the anatomy of it the more you sculpt it the more you showcase it um it's all gonna make sense then that's the trick is that the thing has to make sense whatever you're building have it look like it makes sense and that's gonna help you out so um showcase if you work from a concept showcase the concept showcase your model based off the concept and then show how you can put that thing together and that that should definitely help you out there Hey, what's going on, Nakana? Hello, hello. Uh, that mouth has to be able to chomp a full-size whale. Exactly, right? Yeah, we got to go big with it. Aspiring sculptor here. ZBrush is pretty overwhelming when starting from zero. Any tips on getting started with such a complex program? Yes, absolutely. Okay, the biggest tip is get in here and kind of just play around. The very first thing you want to be able to do is start your scene. So when you start your scene, in fact, we'll go ahead and redo that. I saved it. Let's switch. Let's actually move my concept out the way. Uh, when you start your scene, this is usually what you start with ZBrush. What you want to do to get started is just learn the basic aspect of how to get into it. So you have your tool here, click like a sphere or something, just drag that out. And then at the very top, you'll have an edit, or you just hit T, which is the keyboard shortcut for edit. And you now have your model, but you can't start sculpting it. What you wanna be able to do is then come over here to the top uh, right-hand side, and it'll say make poly mesh 3D. Click that, and now you can start sculpting. From this point forward, just kind of play around. Don't try to make something out the gate you really want to kind of play around with the program and figure it out. If you hit B, you'll just have all your brushes. Kind of just dabble, you know, touch something, see what happens. You know, they're pretty self-explanatory. Paint, you know, paints, uh, chisel brush will kind of cut. Um, if you just hit clay. So I would say kind of learn the tools a little bit. Just get into the brushes and just make something. It doesn't matter if it's a little face or if it's just a blob just kind of get used to it uh, pixel logic if you go to YouTube and type ask ZBrush there's a big tons of beginner videos on how to get started and also ask questions too if you're stuck let's come back here uh, do you typically work with color of the model more like what you want the end results or do you work with more gray mats so you can see all the shapes better um, I actually tend to play with color. Um, since the creature I'm working on is kind of a bluish color, I just selected that. Um, and I tend to stay with like some sort of basic material. But I will color once I start getting more uh, on the exploration side of what I want the character to look like. Color for me helps drastically. I thought you missed me. <laughs> Made it just in time. Yeah, we got about 20 more minutes. Is there some kind of default spheres in the project to start with? Oh yeah, there are some. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you hit comma 
and you go to projects you got a whole bunch of stuff you can just double tap that and it'll ask you if you want to save your project just say no and then boom you're you're here start sculpting but i find it important to learn the original way of how to like drag out a shape and get that going it's super helpful Ooh, that's actually kind of a fun material skin shape there are a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, there really are. Ask ZBrush will will definitely help out. And then, of course, too, just coming here, asking questions, seeing what's happening, all that fun stuff. I really kind of like this, the lighting on this really set up. It's kind of fun. Let's go ahead and save that. Yeah, give that a try. Which brushes first? I use Clay Build Up and Move. Uh, if you type B for brush, M for move, and V... That will give you the move brush. That's the shortcut. You can use the move brush for everything. Like, you can just, you can move big shape. You can move brush. You could do so much. You can block out a whole character with just the move brush if you're patient enough. New features in point six. Create something using new features, please, for teaching. Absolutely. Yeah, let's go ahead and save that. We're gonna we're gonna save him because we got a few more minutes. Let's actually go ahead and sure. Here we'll make like a little like a little face or something. Hey, Tom. Z classroom also, guys. Absolutely, Z classroom. Okay, new feature. So we're actually gonna use the curve brush, the snake curves. So B. S for snake and then curve and I really like curve too. Say yep. It's telling me that I want to use Sculptures Pro. So you want to go up to stroke. Sculptures Pro, turn that on. Next for symmetry. And let's actually kind of let's actually drag this here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and kind of pull this out a little bit. So this will be kind of ugly, <laughs> but we'll get something kind of fun. Actually, you know what? You guys want to see a really cool trick? Um, Michael Pavlovich kind of showed it off a little bit, and I really liked what he did there. And I'm going to show you guys something kind of useful with it. If you guys go to Google and you type in something you want to create, we'll just do like a fish just for a demonstration with the new features. I want a fish. Give me a fish. Here's a goldfish. Here you go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and just save this image real fast. We'll go ahead and hit desktop. And let's just close that. And here's what you're going to do. Go up to texture and import. And we're going to go to desktop. And we're going to grab that fish. Go back to texture, click it, and hit this plus icon right up here. Now, I am moving a little fast, but that's just so I can... We can create something kind of fun. Here. Just give you an idea of how quickly you can get something. Go ahead and turn it to the side. We're going to hold the control and grab the mesh balloon. This is what you guys really want. Start dragging it. And we're going to hold shift. We're actually going to go ahead and... Here, let's go back real quick. Hold uh, space bar, not shift. Kind of get something like this. This will help you so fast. There you go. Hold shift and now send it to the middle. And we already have this kind of shape. Let's actually go ahead and grab the uh, mesh extrude. Should kind of give us where we want the fin. And as you can see here, we already started creating something pretty simple. So you can see you could do a lot really quickly. So we already have this going on. And this is just the one feature. And if you use this enough, you can already get a lot going on here. And then we can actually create the fin. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of just draw this fin out. I'm not going to hold shift. That's going to give me little flippers. So 
Hopefully that's helpful for you. That's one way to do it. Yeah. That's essentially what uh, Michael Palfovich showed off. And I really liked it, so that's one way you could do it. Doesn't have to be a fish, but that's one way. Hey, what's up, Shane? What's happening, dude? Yeah. Just really play around with them. They're really cool. We used a few features tonight. We used the snake curve brush. We used the balloon mesh. And it was a lot of fun, so... Hey, yo, what's happening? <laughs> so far, the only feature I've seen this week is on fish or whales. Yeah, people love the fish and whales, man. It's because it's so easy to want to do that. I actually blocked out in five minutes at home, just kind of a human skin. I took, um, I want to actually record a video of doing it. I took the human anatomy and just kind of shaped it. And that was pretty cool. It was, it was a lot easier to just get something quickly. How much time do we have? Wow, time went by so fast, guys. Just watching you make a fish, yeah. That's what we really started kind of doing today. There we go. Let's get some more teeth going. I don't know why. A fish seems to be pretty much the go-to. <laughs> But this is the Olifis, so this is the kind of what we're working off of. We have our reference for those of you who are new coming in. It's uh, Celtic uh, folklore, like mythology, is the theme this month. And this was one creature that I just fell in love with. So we're kind of doing something based off of this. Control-Shift-D to duplicate, and let's go ahead and... Let's actually turn around and flip this over. There we go. Oops. Tap right there. Reset that. Let's bring it down a little bit. There we go. And if things get off-centered like this, which happens sometimes, you can go ahead and just kind of drag one side, delete hidden, move this over, and then go ahead to geometry and mirror and weld. Make sure... Symmetry is turned on, and you can kind of recenter that whole thing. Uh, excuse me, sir. I was wondering if I can ask advice on how to start in the toy industry. I just recently graduated from 3D animation course, and I'm interested in the toy industry. Uh, if you'd like to get into the toy industry, um, create a portfolio that you are trying to showcase how you make toys. Uh, generally, start with like 3D printing. A lot of my projects start with showing how to make stuff for 3D print, create the portfolio to showcase um, not just the model that you sculpted, but also that it can be produced, it can be made into a physical thing. And then just reach out to toy companies, apply, kind of just get your portfolio out there and also get feedback. Have people look at your portfolio, see if it's something that is um, what they're looking for. Uh, back in like, before COVID and hopefully like after that stuff, we'll be able to like go have events again and, you know, um, like toy cons or like designer con, you know, comic con, you'd be able to go there and actually kind of showcase your portfolio. But um, there's a whole lot out there. Just kind of put yourself out there and, you know, um, ask advice, ask, ask what people think of it. All little things you could do to really help kind of push yourself there. Um, it's a lot if you're gonna go with freelance like I do it's a it's pretty much a hustle all the time You're just constantly putting yourself out and it can be really rewarding once you get companies biting. It just takes time Now how do you increase the resolution of sculptures pro? Oh, yes, sorry. I missed that question uh, Yes, Hasbro uses ZBrush a lot. Yep Okay we let's see here. What do we got? How much time do we have? We have just a few more minutes. Let's go ahead and save this off one more time. And I save Z tools. I don't save projects unless requested by a client because projects are huge. They could take a lot of space. Not a problem. Yep. Okay. Let's actually get a tongue in here. 
something that can be kind of fun. And let's just grab a sphere. I'm just going to drag that in the center. And I'm going to go ahead and elongate that tongue. Also, let's just flatten it. I'm going to hit solo and we're going to go to sub tool and split unmasked. And we'll select that and let's rename that tongue. And now let's just kind of play with it a little bit. Get a decent shape. So let's hit the gizmo, hit Y. And we're actually going to bend it a little bit. So by holding Alt in the middle, we can kind of bend this tongue up a bit. We can even bring that back. Something like that. And then let's spin this down just a bit like that. This gives us something pretty quickly. And again, we're not really worried about details. We're really just kind of worried about the silhouette and how that looks. In fact, if you really want to study silhouette, you can always pick a really dark color and kind of see it for yourself too. Sometimes that's helpful. But I really like the silhouette up here. Just kind of showcases what we got going. And every time I add a piece, I just kind of take a look at that piece and see if it's working, if it makes sense. Does it tell my story? It's all really important stuff. What other software do toy companies use? It depends on the company. They can use all sorts of stuff from Maya, 3DS Max, Fusion 360. But that all depends. Luckily, as a freelancer, I have the ability of choosing most of my programs. So I pretty much stay in ZBrush. Okay, I'm just going to lightly kind of relax smooth. And if you want to relax smooth, you go ahead and hold shift, start smoothing and let go shift and it'll kind of relax the geometry a little bit. Let's go ahead and actually let's pick a little bit darker color. And we're just going to kind of crease down the middle just to give it a little bit of flair. Most tongues have that kind of crease going down the middle. And then we're going to hit clay build up on the opposite side. And I'm going to kind of just build up a little bit of material here because you have like this every tongue has like a flap underneath that connects your tongue to the your lower part of the jaw. So we're just going to kind of pull that out and create this little like tongue webbing. Don't know what the techno <laughs> I don't know the technical term, but that's what I got tongue webbing. Let's actually pick kind of a, a lighter blue. Yeah, again, that just depends. Uh, yeah, that just depends on the company. Okay. There we go. All right, here we're going to start creating the throat. So we want to create like a little throat hole, mouth bag. I'm going to hold, take the move brush, going to hold alt, actually kind of drag that up, which will kind of create like a little bit of a hole back here. And then with the tongue, we'll end up kind of pushing that down a little bit. We're not creating a huge one, just big enough to get that effect. Let's go ahead and grab that. I like to kind of push that tongue down the throat since that's naturally how that would be. Yeah. Uh, do you sculpt only organic or hard surface too? I, I'm mainly organic, but I do dabble on hard surface. I'm actually trying to get better at hard surface. <laughs> with some of the new features, I'm going to be playing more with hard surface, uh, but more, more to the point at the moment, uh, just um, organic. But when making statues and stuff, you end up learning a lot of little things uh, because you got to kind of create the scene, right? So with hard surface modeling, with uh, 
the ability to have uh, the Z modeler brush, it makes it a lot easier. So, but I want to get better at it. Most of my portfolio is organic. Mouth bag. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Oh my gosh, it's 7.51. So we only have a few more minutes. Does anybody have any last minute questions? Thank you all for stopping by and hanging out with me. This was a lot of fun. And hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself. I actually really like this material the way they have it. So next stream, we'll continue this beast. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we just kind of start really pushing the design. And like I said, if I noodle it or play with it a little bit more off, uh, off stream, I'll show you guys what I did and then take it from there. But yeah, I think this guy's coming along pretty decently. Clearly still a lot to do, but that's okay. We got some pretty fun shapes, some pretty interesting ideas, and I think he'll come to life once we figure out a pose. Thanks again. Great job, Ian. Thank you. Pineapple on pizza? <laughs> right? Uh, thanks for streaming. Uh, what days do you stream on your own channel? I stream uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, typically about three hours from 9 p.m. to noon Pacific Standard Time. Nice streaming. Take care. Thanks so much, Shane. I appreciate it. Have a good week, too. Thanks for the stream. Awesome, guys. Uh, do you have a personal stream? I do. Actually, if you guys want to find me, um, here is the link. You guys can find me on my own streams. Please stop by, ask questions. Um, I'll show you guys if you go ahead and pop that link open and move that out of the way. I have my own Station YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, even free files on my mini if you would like to check that stuff out. As I always drop stuff there. But you guys are awesome. <laughs> Oh yeah, pineapple pizza! <laughs> if you guys come to my own stream, you guys will know what that's all about. <laughs> I mean, if you guys like pineapple on pizza, <laughs> that's right. That's gonna be that's gonna be the amazing topic of the day. <laughs> oh, let's get a bigger eye real quick. Let's make some quick changes real fast. Let's get it in there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's save this and. Yes, there it is. Great job. Thank you and welcome. Ah, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you guys so much for everything. I appreciate you all. Welcome me in. And we're going to make some fun stuff. And like I said, this is going to be a big project. So we'll take a few streams to get it done. But it's going to be amazing. And we're going to 3D print it. So we're going to go over all that stuff too. But anyway, guys, we're going to call it for the day. Thank you guys so much for everything. And please, please, please. Be safe. Happy sculpting. Enjoy yourself. Great first stream. We'll wait for the rest of the stream. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, guys. Great stream. Can't wait for the next one. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. All right, guys. That will be it. So uh, it should be Sunday. Every Sunday at 5 p.m. And if that ever changes, you guys will be the first to know. <laughs> this guy would look awesome in clear resin. You know, and I'm going to do some more research on the pose, too. And if you guys ever have ideas, please drop it in my Discord because I do love taking a look at other people's ideas and collaborating. It is super fun. But thank you guys so much for stopping by and enjoy yourself. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, 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 bye. Uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so Los Angeles time. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.